uh, it, it gives me no joy to tell you that we had a big fight yesterday and uh, your mom's camel toe broke up in the middle of... Oh. Is there a the Yoko? Middle, broke up in the middle of the sound check. Ah, that's Broke terrible. up before our first show at the oh. Bacchanal. Oh. All shows are canceled. Oh. Refunds at the usual places where you bought the tickets, you know. Waiting to see if there'll be any spinoff bands from... Mm-hmm. A band that had a lot of promise. Yep. Your mom's camel toe. Too bad. We had perfected the album cover art. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the drummer now touring is just toe. Uh oh. That's kind of pathetic. And yeah, it really is. A group of studio musicians, and it's just not selling tickets. A couple stories about about wealth you can't even imagine. I mean, don't we all think that like if someday we had a million dollars, yeah, we could retire and just never worry about life again. Yeah, certainly the dream I grew up. Thinking. A million dollars. Yeah. I mean, if someday you woke up, you looked in your know, your bank account statements and everything like that, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, ding, a million dollars. Cool mill. Yeah. You've been working for seven thousand years. <laughs> you got a million dollars in the bank. Go ahead, take it easy. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, sure. Absolutely. Cat in New York just bought a painting for $130 million. What? $130 yeah. million dollars for a painting. It better be a Norman Rockwell where the humans look it's like not, humans. It's not. It's well, not there's bad. an actual face. It's not bad, you know, but it's it's a painting for $130 million. And it's by a guy you never heard of before. Like Clink or something like that. It's not even by like a big time. Right. Rock star painter. I've never even heard of the guy before. Colonel Clink painted? Yes. <laughs> Paint my numbers. The guy bought a painting for $130 million. And it's of some other guy's girlfriend. Yeah, but who, I mean, it's not even by like Renoir right. or Van Gogh or Picasso, like a big name. You right. know, someone's going to go, oh, by the way, have you seen my Clink? <laughs> uh, no, I haven't. What's that worth? $130 million. You're kidding. <laughs> Spent 130 million on a clink. I got a Van Gogh for six bucks. <laughs> and you know what that guy did to get the money to buy the clink painting? He sold me lipstick and makeup. Yeah, he's, he's the, the Estee, heir. Like, Estee Lauder guy. He's the heir to the Estee Lauder found uh, uh, whatever thing. Yeah. But 130 million dollars for a stinking painting. Wow. To give you an idea, what you can get for 130 million dollars? Mm-hmm. The Prince of Saudi Arabia has put his Aspen home up for sale. It's got 15 bedrooms, 16 bathrooms. Uh-huh. It's this, How big is your house? Think about your square footage on your house right now. Okay. 56,000 square feet. Wow. Oh, my God. 56,000 square feet. <laughs> Even Aaron Spelling is popping up out of his Check box. Hey, it's a little on. much. Come on. Come <laughs> what do you need 56,000 square feet for? It's got a racquetball court. It's got an indoor pool, sure. an outdoor water feature, uh-huh. and several smaller homes scattered about the property. Well, It's in th- Aspen, and that's $130 million. One guy has a 15-bedroom, 56,000-square-foot mountain palace in Aspen, mm-hmm. and another guy's got a painting. Uh. <laughs> now, what would you rather have? Uh. Well, take the house. God. I just looked up the picture. It's it's, it's a, Margaret Hamilton. It's the Wicked Witch. It's a picture. <laughs> it's a picture. Mm-hmm. Big deal. God. And, you know, I understand you spending... You know, because the guy's got the guy. The guy is knocking on three bill right. for his personal wealth. Okay, you can afford a hundred thirty million dollar painting, but wouldn't you rather have like a big time name? Yeah, you'd want a like you said a Van Gogh or something. I mean, the guy's got a clink. <laughs> <laughs> so what? What's the guy's name? The painter? Do you have it there? Klimped. Yeah, it's worse. A clink would at least be funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. climped. A climped. Yeah. Have you ever heard of it? 
Gustav Klimt? Have no. Ever heard of it? No, 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 no. Man. no. no. I, I contend even people who studied art a little bit have never heard of this guy. Ever. How does this guy rate a $130 million price? And do I even have the name? Do, do I have the price right? Yes, $135 yeah. million. $135? Yes. Well, I know, mean, I was off by $5 million. <laughs> <laughs> well, his work embodies the high-keyed, erotic, psychological, and aesthetic preoccupations of turn-of-the-century Vienna's dazzling intellectual world. Oh, I need that. Uh, I can sum that one up for you. Mm. No kidding. <laughs> it's a never heard of you before. And it's... For my eyes, a, an entirely unappealing picture. It's it's okay. It's fine. It's like anything else you see in an art gallery. Nice. It's another painting. Can we go to Hooters now? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. How quickly do you bore being in an art gallery? And that guy spent $130 million on a painting, and he could have bought a 56,000 square foot yeah. palace mm -hmm. in Aspen freaking Colorado. And get this. In terms of money that you never understand, you know why the prince has sold it? Why? He's too busy to go there. He's never <laughs> even been there. A wow. prince is too busy doing what? Prince Princing stuff. <laughs> Princing? <laughs> Partying like it's 1999. I don't know. He's never even think about. It. Have you ever have you ever done a project at your house like done a little add-on? You mm -hmm. know, I know you did work in your backyard. Right. Done a little something. I mean, you pay attention to it. You're there. You're paying attention. You're looking at it. This guy built a 56,000 square foot palace in Aspen and has never been there. Ah, sell it. Ah, whatever. <laughs> well, you got to think downhill skiing is not that appealing to a guy who's, you know, wearing all the robes and stuff. I mean, it's it's going to get wet and you're going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> and Money is wasted on the rich. Totally. Well, those Gore-Tex burkas can keep the uh, <laughs> snow out if you want to get into this Muslim they skiing help, yeah. community. Mm -hmm. These billionaires... Who blow it? I mean, at least 130 on a, on a palace in Aspen. Okay. Right. All right. I get it. You're filthy mm -hmm. rich, and that's the way you roll. I get it. But 130 on a painting? Could you imagine God. sitting in front of you, you know, a painting, and you're holding in your hands and looking at it with outstretched arms, a $135 million painting. Now, that might be somewhat of a thrill for this guy who's doing anything to fight off his depression for his useless... Trust fund life. <laughs> God. And that's not the only painting he has. He bought it to put with all his other damned expensive paintings. That's fine. Not that much. That's fine. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not begrudging the guy for having an art museum. Right. Right on. And it's a cool looking building. Mm -hmm. And I know people dig that kind of stuff. For me, going to an art museum would be so that's low your torture. on yeah. the list. Yeah. Is there no Hooters in this town? Are you kidding me? <laughs> but, but I don't begrudge people who do it. But I'm right. just saying, 130 million. This is his crown piece, and it's it, it's what? Klimped? Yes, Klimped. Klimped. It sounds like <laughs> never well, heard of you, Gustav Klimped. And you know, if they'd said it's 136 million, mm -hmm. he'd have paid it, and you sure. could have just pulled one million off the top, and no one would have ever known. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between being a millionaire, and being a morning DJ. <laughs> right there. I hate to see you depress yourself so early in the day, Bob. It's just, <laughs> it, it's just so true. Money is wasted on the rich. I know. Well, at least I got that. At least I got the ninth inning of the All-Star game oh, yeah. to chase my troubles away. Oh, man, you know, for five minutes you had me distracted from that, Dave. Let's talk about Clint again. <laughs> Just be glad you're not the chainsaw this morning. Yeah. What he's got to do next, uh, no man deserves Dad. that task. Oh, man. Sports, next. From the Temecula Valley, it's Q103. Coming to you live from San Diego, it's 101 KGB. Dave Shelley and Chainsaw Show. Fun, food, friends, and live music on the Big Bay. San Diego Symphony's Summer Pops, presented by Saquon Resort and Casino, is a celebration of sunset concerts and fireworks downtown at Embarcadero Marina Park South. 
Howard Shores Academy Award-winning Lord of the Rings Symphony comes to the Summer Pops Thursday, July 20th. Join the San Diego Symphony and the Master Chorale for this incredible concert. Order your tickets now by calling 619-235-0804 or at sandiegosymphony.com. I don't know what was more difficult to watch last night. Top of the ninth inning of the All-Star Game. Or the previous scattered Joe Buck stroke-off TV commercials. God. Did you see any of these? Yes. Bunch of guys run into Joe Buck and they treat him like he's the ghost of Mickey Mantle. Hey, let me touch your throat. <laughs> what? What? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure Joe Buck is staying at Holiday Inn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And you got to figure now everyone's going to want to touch Joe Buck's uh, throat because now it's going to become a fad right. and he's not going to ever be able to get away from that. You know, if Joe Buck ever uh, rolls through San Diego and we get to do the interview, I'm going to resist the temptation to touch Joe Buck's throat. <laughs> 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 well, think how many people want to touch Emily's throat. That's, That's different. True. They just want to do it from the inside. There's much more greatness going on there. <laughs> and not with their hands. Well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Watching this thing last night, and I'm starting to squirm on the couch, and Nicole goes, it's just a game. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Baseball is not just a game. It isn't. It doesn't apply on baseball. It's why we get excited. It's fun. Sinks to your shoes. <laughs> Alright. Let's just get it over. Good ball! Okay. Mm. Thank you, David, and hello again, everybody, in the sports world. In the Major League All-Star game last night in Pittsburgh, the National League had a two-to-one lead with the Padres Trevor Hoffman attempting the save mm -hmm. in the ninth inning. Two outs, two runners on, two strikes on Texas Rangers shortstop Michael Young. World Series home field advantage on the line. The partisan National League crowd in Pittsburgh on its feet. One strike away. Here's the windup. The pitch swung on and lined into right center, a base hit. Uh -oh. And this ball will get to the wall. And two runs will score. Young around second, heading for third. The relay to third, not in time. A two-run triple by Michael Young with the American League down to its final strike. And they have taken a 3-2 to two lead here in the top of the ninth. Yeah. And then the Yankees' Mariano Rivera then saved it for the American League, which has secured home field advantage in the World Series with that victory last night. Trevor spoke afterwards. Two strikes over the middle plate isn't exactly a smart pitch to a guy like, like that, especially a uh, reigning batting champion. So, uh, um, you know. Those things happen. Would have liked to have thrown a little more off the plate with two strikes and maybe go from there, but uh, uh -huh. should have, could have, would have isn't going to work. The National League has not won an All-Star game since 1996, and in that ta same time span, the American League has won seven out of ten World Series. Isn't that interesting? Not to the National Leaguers, that's for sure. The good news is, when the Padres are in the World Series this October, after winning the first two games on the road in the American League ballpark, they can close out the World Series sweep at Petco in games three and four. Is there a history of insanity in your family? Yes, and without exception. The first place Padres resume action Friday night at Petco Park against the Atlanta Braves. Okay. Italian soccer player Marco Materazzi, the victim of French superstar Zidane's now famous headbutt in the World Cup Championship final, admits that he tugged on the shirt and insulted Zidane but denies he called him the son of a terrorist whore, as widely mm. speculated. He actually called her a terrorist whore. It's all in the pronunciation. And for my money, I think Matarazzi is trying to BS us. But that's what his claim is. So he cops to the twister, but not to the insult. Exactly. Got it. He said he said something, but he said it's something that's said all the time in the pitch, which is the name of the field, the pitch. They call it the, the pitch. Those damn foreigners have a different word for everything. everything. <laughs> and finally, I know this isn't sports, but Dave, your dream girl, your angel, your personal urban cougar would like to meet you tonight at Coco's for the 4 o'clock special. Cheryl Ladd is 55 years old today. And wow. for those of you who are too young to remember, she was the hottest Charlie's Angel of them all and virtually mauled 
Dave <laughs> at the Buick Invitational <laughs> at Tory Pines, making a spectacle mm -hmm. of herself fawning all over the local radio she's personality. And yes, yes, she still looks sensational. Cheryl, would you like to see it? Because I will show it to you, huh? <laughs> In other sports, David. You know, I didn't understand something last night. Watch this game. D did they do something? Because it was like every pitch. It wasn't every pitch, but it sure seemed like every ball that got the tiniest foul tip. And I'm telling you, I had I put it on slow motion and everything. Did you notice how many times it sounded like the ball was being hit out of the park last night on Fox? Well, Mike, wasn't it? over mic'd. Yes. over mic'd because every foul tip mm -hmm. sounded like a Grand Slam mm -hmm. home run every single time. Yep. Isn't that interesting? I find it to be. Yes. It is 6.33 and one second and this is your 101.5 ATV Sports Network. Oh my! <sighs> Three more times. <laughs> Just a game. <laughs> no baby, it's baseball! It doesn't count. It does count. We were just trying to comfort ourselves. And it was our guy you <laughs> cacked on it. I know. It was done. Two outs. Two strikes. Ah, throw that drop in the basement chain. Something. I'll bet he would have wished he could have. What's that? Could have, would have, should have, didn't. What? He grooved a fastball instead of that. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I was drop saying. Out, I was up. saying, here comes the changeup. Yeah. Here is the change-up, right? The change-up, right? What? What was that? You, he figured he'd fool him because everyone expected the change. He, figured, he fooled he, me. Yeah, didn't fool Michael Young. He fooled me because I kept saying this is the change-up, right? Yeah. This is it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and Trevor's probably thinking, all right, he's, he's expecting change-up. He's going to lay off it. Because you can't hit strike. the change-up. No. Even if you time it right, you can't hit it because no. it's on the ground. Right. <sighs> Breathe and exhale. I don't want to breathe. <laughs> breathe. Inhale through the nose I don't and push it out through the mouth. I don't want to. <laughs> Just dream about Cheryl Ladd today. Mm -hmm. Meet her for Coco's at 4 o'clock. She gets the discount. You seen my mistress on NBC this morning? You don't get cuter than that. She's 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 working it. Kimberly? Yep. Oh, oh well, No, Bill Menish. <laughs> I thought Marianne was yours, too. Uh, you know, Mary Ann and I just had kind of like a secret little dirty flame. Oh, okay. Kimberly and I are I out. Can't you can't know. keep your chicks straight. Well, whatever. Cheryl, Kimberly, Mary Ann. Uh, and Cheryl and I never really had a thing. It's like Chainsaw said. She just mauled me. Well, she just embarrassed herself. Unrequited. Uh, hmm. Unrequited. Mm. David. Chainsaw brought to you by Bulls Only Rodeo 8. It is back Friday and Saturday. 730 Lakeside Arena, sponsored by El Cajon Ford. Produced by the Lakeside Optimist, but most importantly... Sanctioned by the IPRA. Tickets 15 for grown-ups, 8 for kids 6 and under. Call 619-443-2447 or visit BullsOnlyRodeo.com. There's only one way to describe summer in Southern California. Spectacular. This year, the Auto Club wants to make your summer more spectacular than ever. Get great discounts when you show your Auto Club membership card at Show Your Card and Save Participating Businesses, such as El Monte RV Rentals, the Auto Club of Southern California, Legoland California, and Marriott Hotels and Resorts. And receive additional limited time savings when you get a free AAA Summer Fun Guide filled with coupons and summer fun tips. Go to AAA.com or visit your nearest Auto Club office for details. Can someone tell me what those, um, what the initials on the wristbands were last night during the All-Star game? I didn't even notice. Everyone was wearing them, even the umpires. Oh, Big yeah? banana yellow wristbands oh. that said RCW on them. 888-570-1015. Is there a informed person who knows what the initials were all about. There is some kind of... And what was... On the Canadian... Like on the Blue Jay guys, they had some kind of patch on their sleeves that said TC with a microphone next to it. Anyone know what that was all about? There were all these little tributes last night. And I felt completely out of the loop. Eight 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 five seven zero one zero one five. Direct connect here at the KGB. Hello? Yeah, the um, the RCW, I think it was Roberto Clemente, they had a, a thing in the beginning about him. He died 
in like 78. He was like a Pittsburgh Pirate. They had a big old thing. His What's the W there. for, though? Um, I like statistics. They got to be right. I, know, I guess. <laughs> the RC, I Are you guessing like, about this? You know, Are you guessing about this? No, well, well the RC I am, but it, it makes sense. That they're all wearing it because they were all. What was know. the W though? Um. Yeah, you know. Look, I got uh, Boyer here to make wild <laughs> guesses. Yeah, I can make <laughs> stuff up. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Hi, you're on the DSC. Hello, you're on the DSC. Hello. Yeah, hey, let Dave know. You want to know what the RCW meant? Do you want to talk to Dave? No, nah, just let him know it meant the uh, Royal Cockwhackers. <laughs> <laughs> There's a club now. Apparently. I didn't know. I'll join. Wow. <laughs> I think you're already an honorary member. <clears throat> Apparently there was a, uh, the the microphone. I figured it was for some kind of Jerry Coleman type guy mm -hmm. on the Blue Jays who had been there for a long time and maybe had, had croaked or something like that. And uh, we understand it's for a radio broadcaster who had died of cancer. Right. So here's Bud. You're on the DSC. What's going on, Bud? Hey, Dave. It was Roberto Clemente Walker. What's the Walker part? It must have been his real last name. Oh, okay. All right. Really? Because I never understood. I, I never knew what the W was for. Me neither. Yeah. I saw the whole fourth or fifth inning presentation, and his wife was out there and all that stuff. And... Hey, I, I got one more question for you. Isn't it true, by the way, that Roberto Clemente got 3,000 hits on the screws and then went and crashed in an airplane that and died. That is correct. 3000 wow. on the money. And then crashed uh, while he was trying to do a humanitarian effort for earthquake victims. Mm -hmm. That is correct. And he was an active player when he died. Yes, he was. So, that was terrible. What's up, bud? Hey, what happened to you and Bromo on Thursday? Uh, I give up. What happened to me and Bromo? We played golf with you guys Thursday. What happened to you guys on Thursday? You guys fell like three or four holes behind us. Oh, we got, we got behind and... Never were able to caught up and never saw you guys again. Yeah. We got through, I'm going to say it was the 14th or the 15th hole and I ran out of time. I oh, had okay. a kid, I had a kid thing going on that day. Sounds good. You know what? It's funny, bud. Before, uh, when I was living the life of leisure, <laughs> but I don't now, but, uh, I'd, I'd be out golfing on one of our Thursday things with our guys and I'd be like, you know, do you get to play very often? And the guy would say to me, you know, I just can't find the time. Uh huh. And I'd be like, can't find the time. What's wrong with you? And now, and now all of a sudden, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden, I'm like, you can't find the time. If I can squeeze in nine holes, I feel like I struck the lottery. Yeah. Okay. Well, we just thought you guys maybe uh, like quit. No. Well, I did actually, unfortunately, but it, it wasn't because of anything other than I ran out of time. And I'm, you know, I apologize to you, but I, I usually make a point before we tee off of telling the guys that I might not be able to finish because not a problem. Yeah. Did you enjoy yourself? We had a good time. Did you play it all the way out there? Yep. Benita, how'd you shoot? Lousy as usual. And a boy, <laughs> hey, you and I me. I so I was happy. We can hang out together sometime. You know it. All right, buddy. All right, thanks. See you, bud. Pirates of the Caribbean saw it yesterday. Oh, and the movie yeah. that uh, the movie that set the record box office. Mm -hmm. Again, another. I think this is the third time it's showing up this morning. One hundred and thirty, one hundred and thirty-five yep. million dollars. That neighborhood. Yeah, I only had two complaints about it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, big production, a lot of money goes into it. I only had two complaints. Which were? It's way too freaking long, and right. I didn't get it. Didn't get it. Other than that. That's all? Other than that, <laughs> it's a masterpiece. Wow. You're just bitchy, David. You're insatiable. <laughs> it's w I just, you know what? I, I don't have the ass for a two and a half hour movie. Yeah. Never. God. You can't do it. I just don't have it. That's I went why into movies it. at home are so much better because you're on the couch and then you move to your chair and then you're on the floor if you want. You know, And it's you just put better. it on pause yeah. and go take care of business. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless, take a phone call, go to the mm -hmm. bathroom, whatever. And I did. You know, it never fails. I get into a two and a half hour movie and I turn into a leaky faucet. Oh, me too. Because <laughs> you di do you get the Diet Coke on the way in? I certainly do. And it's just up and down like a pogo stick all game. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. Sometimes I'm looking at myself going, what is your problem? Do I have to go take one of these old man pills? You're or? in your second trimester. That'll happen <laughs> when the planet gets squeezed down there like that. The worst timing. I get into something that I don't want to leave. I get into a meeting I don't want to leave or a movie or something like that mm -hmm. or... You name it. <laughs> don't want to leave. Yeah. It's like, uh, I got to go pee for the 17th time. <laughs> God. Excuse me, honey. I, I'll be right back. In a movie <laughs> like that, and, and I, I was at a movie theater where uh, we were the furthest theater away from the bathrooms, yeah. which are all the way up on the second story. Yes. And it's, uh, yes. 
Get me a Sherpa to go to the men's room again. <laughs> the upstairs bathrooms of theater should be outlawed. Yeah, they really should. I just assume you knocked out one of the theaters and put in a nice big bathroom there. Right across the hall from nice. every door. Yeah, exactly. That'd be nice. But um, it, it's so long, and I... Didn't didn't get it. Don't get it. I mean, what's to get? I mean, the ball gets in the bathroom, time? and then he gets the bat, and then he gets away. You know, and then you sit there, and you're like, well, I must be the dumbest guy on earth because it's a pirate movie. Mm -hmm. You know? It's not like I'm watching E equals MC squared, the musical. <laughs> It's a pirate movie. <laughs> oh, that was good. Too. Based, based on a true story, Dave, maybe you're, you just consult your history books and you'll be able to fill in the blanks. Tell me, what's the tough nut to crack on R, baby? <laughs> Where's me gold? You know, I didn't get it. God. Stupid. Was it funny? Was Kinda, it visual, visually not, stimulating? You know what it is? And, and this won't hit you, Chainsaw, but it, it, it totally hit Nicole and me. For fans of the movies and fans of these kind of fantasy movies and stuff like that, it was totally The Empire Strikes Back. Right. The follow-up movie to the glorious Star Wars that was so great, so funny, so fun, so cowboy, so everything. Mm -hmm. And then you got this big, as Nicole put it, big chunk of the puzzle stuck in the middle. Because they've already shot the third one. Mm -hmm. Right. Third one's coming. Ah. And the third one will be great. And it'll tie up all kinds of loose right. ends. But this one, not as fun. Ah. Way long. Depressing at the end. No. Oh. oh yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah. It's like oh. depressing. Depressing. It wasn't fun. Hey, like pirates, pirates are sensitive too. They get into pickles. Oh. Yeah. What's up, Randy? Hey, what's up, you hooer? Thank you very much. <laughs> I prefer dirty little hooer, but go ahead. Yep. Yeah. I totally agree with you though. It's like the story and everything is like who cares? Yeah. What, what is going on here? here? I thought, the, I thought the pufferfish guy was pretty dean cool. Uh, you mean uh, Davy Jones? No, one of his. Well, one of his. Uh, one of his pirates, the guy that looks like a pufferfish. You remember him? Uh, there. I mean, it's hard to keep all the creatures straight. Yeah. The special yeah, effects. Was. Hey, mm -hmm. you know what? A plus on special effects on this movie. Definitely, seriously, definitely. that that was total blast. That was a total total blast. But in terms of the story. <sighs> yeah, yeah. You got a guy with a hermit crab for a head, and he's like telling you some <laughs> some plot you don't care about. You know, that, that's the thing. That's the thing. You're sitting there. You're sitting there, and these guys are talking. All of a sudden, a tree turns into a face, Naturally. and he's giving you the critical information. You're going, "Holy crap! That tree just... What did he say? What did he say? I missed it." Because I was. Hi, Dave. I gotta get. I'm already going. Oh. Oh. Dirty little whore. I get stuck. <laughs> Trevor has a sleep train. Well, he doesn't on the road, that's no. clear. He was on the road. <laughs> that's it. And, uh, I don't know, bunking with Joe Buck over at Holiday Inn. <laughs> Rubbing his throat all night. <laughs> Excuse me? What? Excuse me, Chainsaw? <laughs> was Emily there? It just goes to show you the value of a sleep train, folks. Yes. Yes. Trevor Hoffman. You know, takes his leave from his beloved family there in the ranch. You know that dude is laying his frame down oh, on a sleep yeah. train. Probably a select comfort or maybe one of those Tempur-Pedic things where his wife can hop around on the other side mm -hmm. of the bed and not knock over his glass of Chardonnay. <laughs> yeah, that happens every night. That's what I like to think the Hoffmans are up to. Me too. But he goes out on the road and stays in some hotel. They don't have a sleep train. Next thing you know, <laughs> all-star game's over. Don't let this happen to you, folks. Get yourself to Sleep Train today. You know they have the best selection of beds in the business. All at the lowest guaranteed price. In fact, if you have good credit, the savings get even better. You're going to get your brand new bed today. There's no waiting around for it. Just do your shopping, hurry home, take a nap. How good is that? Sleep Train San Diego. Your ticket to a better night's sleep. You know how it is. You go to the movies, you invest a lot of time... Putting in two and a half, two and three quarters. Is it two hours and 45 minutes, that movie? 
I got two and a half yeah. anyway. I was so, watching yeah. my watch. Yeah. Oh, oh that's, you know, that's the death. It yeah. is. And you don't want to admit it to Never. yourself. You don't want to admit it that you don't understand the cartoon. You know? <laughs> How dumb are you? Well, I guess I'm pretty dumb. I just don't have the ass it takes for that long of a movie. Yeah. And I knew it was going to be long. And I was going into it thinking, well, you know, I saw The Color Purple and I saw Dances with Wolves. Those mm-hmm. were long movies. And I guess I have blocked out that I didn't have the ass for those movies either. Yeah. Just don't have it. Mm-mm. You forget. And I don't understand how you do. I don't get how you do. You must be very enthralled with the topic matter to make you forget how uncomfortable you are. There's really only one topic matter to keep me going that long, and it, it's not pirates. Kendall. <laughs> Dave. What's up, girl? The first, we went and saw that movie at the casino at Avalon this weekend. Yeah. In Catalina Island. First thing that my husband said, he, we all slept through part of it. Yeah. And the first thing he said... I do not have a two and a half hour ass. Yeah. First thing you said. Well, he's my brother, apparently. Yeah. And then we ended up sitting. Did you sit all the way to the end? Oh, yeah. Well, you mean through the credits? Through the credits? No. Oh, you didn't? No. Why? What happens you, to the credits? At the very end, the credits are like about as long as the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I don't want to give much away, but you remember the dog was being chased by the by the yeah. things on the beach or something? It has to do with the dog. Oh, Okay. So you, now you got to see the end. Oh. <laughs> you got to go back. You got to go back and do it again. <laughs> yeah, but the, did you notice at the very end of the movie they brought uh, Captain Barbosa back? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So they brought back every single character, and the whole time I'm like, where's Barbosa? Yeah. So anyway, yeah. But my husband does not have a two and a half hour ass. And that's I'm with that. him. I'm with him. That's why I like the J.K. Conspiracy and our movie that's coming out mm-hmm. this fall, our major motion picture, which Much may shorter. not be long enough to be a major motion picture. Oh, thank God. We'll get it in under an hour for you. Short Half as long and twice as stupid. <laughs> yeah. That's right on. All right, you guys got to go. Thanks, Kendall. I love your show. Love your show. Next movie I'm going to see. Any guesses? Devil. Word play? <laughs> yeah. The crossword movie, David? Yeah, boy. I'm going to drive through a dork storm and go see your crossword <laughs> puzzle movie. I don't think so. The air conditioning's good and the theater is not crowded. <laughs> because it's completely <laughs> unpopular. <laughs> It got good reviews, but you know how the reviewers are. They love mm-hmm. that intellectual, oh, it's very thoughtful. We don't even own a television watching <laughs> machine. <laughs> we only go to the independent theaters of Lawyer and Delma. Which one, Shell? Devil Wears Prada? Yeah, I think I so. I want to see that, too. Is that the one with Meryl Streep? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah Meryl looks, Streep and Anne Hathaway. Yeah, that looks fun. It is a good movie. Uh, you've seen it. Mark yes. Sanchez. Is piping. it two and a half hours long? It is not two and a half hours. Uh, all right. Is it a chick movie? It is a chick movie, but um, there's hot chicks in it. They're in fashion, so, you know, it's not bad to look at. And they always uh, base on each other, which is real fun. Yeah. They're very catty. I mean, I, I looked at it and I thought, yeah, I think it is a chick movie, but it's chick power movie, which, I mean, it doesn't look to me like any of them are crying because half of them just came down with cancer and we're going to wither and right. die for the right. last hour. Right. Nobody dies. That's a good thing. Sanchez? Then it's not a chick movie, then. I think you've got to have a character who withers mm-hmm. and dies. Mm-hmm. Right there on the screen. Very slowly. Yes. Right. Just like you mm-hmm. in the theater there mm-hmm. to make it a true chick movie. Yeah, chick power movie, Thelma and Louise. Maybe that's right. A different genre. Now, will Dave understand this? Why well, wouldn't I? Why wouldn't he? Well, you didn't understand Pirates of the Caribbean. I just... I don't know who does. I really don't. I, don't, I, I dare anybody to tell me that they understood why they had to do... Half the, that movie didn't need to be half as long as it was. None Seriously. of them do. Ours didn't. <laughs> well, I mean, it, 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 it was tough. But I did some reading this weekend. And um, real life devils. This, this Devil Wears Prada, apparently, is about this woman who is the queen of the fashion empire. Mm-hmm. And she has all this power and all this stuff. But apparently she is a pain in the ass to work for right do you guys know who Anne hathaway is yes yes she's a pretty girl mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they call her the fat chick in right. this movie that's how <laughs> right. bad yes. that's how bad the basing is in this movie mm-hmm. they refer to her as the fat chick Anne hathaway of all people well they frump her up i've seen the uh, right. previews and I 10 don't... pounds dude yeah. yeah they put her up to 105 and they call her the Ooh. fat chick yeah 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 uh here are some of the stories about uh, real-life devils. Wendy in Los Angeles says, We were rear-ended 
while driving to a client meeting, my boss screamed at us to keep editing our PowerPoint presentation, jumped out of the car and began screaming at the other driver. What are you thinking? I don't have time for this. Then she jumped back in the car and drove away before the police showed up oh and God. never once asked if we were okay. <laughs> Alex in Miami says, at our sales meeting, our manager wanted to motivate people to make their quotas, so he put on a clip from Glen Gary, Glenn Ross. Oh, God. Oh, no. What's the matter? It's oh, such a depressing movie about sales, so. chasing after yeah. sales and doing all these sordid it, tricks. And It made Death of a Salesman look oh, like a comedy. I Just, swear to God, I don't know how people work in sales. Oh. I don't know how you do it. Well, this will scare you away from it if you can. I'm already this scared movie. away from it. Yeah, I spent like three weeks, maybe two weeks, selling shoes at mm -hmm. Kinney, and that was my. <laughs> that was it. That was my big experience <laughs> with sales. Your debut and your salon. Because, like, selling. I, you know, these 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 people would come in and they wanted shoes, right. specifically women, and they wanted shoes, and it's not that hard. It's like, okay, I'll find your shoes. You know, the big, the the the. the the speed bump in selling shoes is you don't have the size. Right. right. They come in. They figure out what they want. They do all the work. Mm -hmm. You go in the back room and get the box and put it on their feet. That's it. It's not that hard. And I felt good about it. You know, I was turning clients over. I was selling shoes. And my boss would come up to me and say, why didn't you sell them the matching purse? Why didn't you make them buy a belt? And all of a sudden, I'm like, I don't want to take their money. Because yeah. <laughs> you hate to strong arm someone yeah. when they've come in. Yeah. And they're already motivated to buy what they wanted. I hated it. Yeah. I, I would, do I not do have that that blood in the water shark yeah. instinct to be in sales. But at then, all. when you find a gregarious, talented salesperson, they're gold. It's really impressive to see those people because easy. they're into the purse and the mm -hmm. belt, and they're enthusiastic, and they get you going. Yep. Could you do it? No, me no. No, I'm not I just wired that way. It. Well, anyway, at this sales meeting, he put on a clip of Glen Gary, Glen Ross, Ugh. where a salesman gets insulted by his manager. After the clip finished, he said. You'll be fired by the end of the month if you don't sell our quota. Ah, fear motivation. God. Fun. Michelle in Huntsville says, I asked off one day because I was a bridesmaid in my cousin's wedding. And my boss told me he didn't understand why I needed to go. He skipped his own brother's wedding sure. so he could work. Right. Love people like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I got that when I first moved here. What? I was in a wedding in Phoenix and I wanted to take off on Friday. Yeah. To go for the rehearsal dinner. And uh, and I was a bridesmaid in it and our first program director. Ted. I just I can't no, I can't we can't no. No. Could you take the flight at ten and still get there in time? Well yeah. What was the wedding at eight in the morning? No, I was driving. Why? So I don't know. Oh, okay. Just, yeah. Perfect. I, I just did. Because uh, I, I think because I needed a car that weekend. Jeannie and Balt yeah, I don't have rental cars there. Uh -huh. Jeannie in Baltimore said, for Christmas, my boss said she just picked out something small for presents for us. This is great. I love this one. The boss picking out presents for Christmas. Uh -oh. I just got something small for you. Mine was stationary that the American Heart Association sends to uh -huh. get donations. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. yeah. the, free, the free stationary that they send out, hoping that you they will guilt you into sending them five bucks. Right. Someone else got a sweater from Neiman Marcus that had a limited tag on it. God. It was in a Neiman Marcus God. box, but it had a limited tag on God. it. God. And by the way, the sweater was covered with pills and reeked of her perfume. Oh. You know those little fuzzy balls uh -huh. that you get after you've oh, worn yeah, it like right. for a month? Right. right. <laughs> a used <laughs> sweater. Nice. That she had not taken the tag off yet. Now, if it was a Vicodin prescription pill, so well, then you got said, something. Then you got a you know weekend. <laughs> Megan says every day, my customer service boss made us show her the inside of our mouths. If our breath wasn't up to standards, she would make us eat breath mints and tell us that the customer can smell bad breath through the telephones. Oh my God! Wow. That's right. They answered phones, but if they had what was not considered up to par oral <laughs> hygiene. Uh huh. The boss said they can smell bad breath through the phones. Uh huh. Well, like they might the, have to. It's like the DJ, uh, the program director saying, okay, as a DJ, I want you to place a photograph in front of the console, and that's the person you're talking to. Right. Imagine that person. <laughs> no, you're in my, you're talking. Come on. They can't see it here. We've, we've it. all worked for that program director, smell haven't it. we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course yeah. Uh, Amy in Dallas says, I worked as a graphic designer 
My boss came into my office and told me she needed mock business cards. One that identified her as owning a landscaping business and another as an interior designer. This way she could go to a designer's market in Dallas and find herself a discount. All right, well, whatever. Sarah, Pennsylvania says, while riding in my boss's car to a meeting, I found ants crawling up my legs because he gets fast food for dinner and throws the garbage in the back seat. Mm. Oh. Mm. And then Beverly in Atlanta says, one day, the management company called and said the building we worked in had a bomb. There was a bomb threat. Oh, no. And the companies were evacuating the building. So I called my boss to report it to her. She called back a few minutes later and told me that the owner of the company had sent word forbidding me for telling anyone else in the company about the bomb threat. <laughs> Don't you dare tell anyone <laughs> about the bomb in the building. Just keep working. Not two minutes went by before the owner of the company left for the day. So the owner left, <laughs> but keep the workers there. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty harsh. It's amazing who gets to become boss, you know? It really mm -hmm. is. They're so awful. If the Barney a, Fife's of the world. That's it. Oh, God. Yeah. If you got a devil, if you got a bad boss devil, want to hear the story? 888-570-1015. Oh, we have some that we can share, sure. <laughs> Twist my arm. 888-570-1015. Direct Connect. You are on the radio telling your story about your bad devil boss next the dsc i don't want to work you don't want to work because your boss sucks the devil wears prada it's about these these bosses who are just awful true that 888-570-1015. Mike, you're on the DSC. What's going on, buddy? Mike, are you there? Mike's boss Mike's probably, boss probably killed him. <laughs> hey, Emily, do we have a prize we can give away for the worst boss story of them all? we got some Eddie Money tickets still, uh, don't we? Yes, we do. Let's do that. I'll tell you what, we'll hook you up with a concert prize package if your boss story is the worst of them all. Here's what I'll give you. Tickets for Eddie Money. That's Thursday. Humphreys Concerts by the Bay. Street Scene, which is not on a street anymore. No. Uh, starring Kanye West. Bad Religion. Yellow Card. Slightly Stupid. Mm. And... Um, and we'll throw in some tickets for the championship off-road racing as well in Chula Vista. These are big draw events, people. They have thousands of people at every one of these. And tickets can sometimes be kind of tricky to come by. If you've got the best a-hole boss story of them all, best Merrill Street boss story, we'll hook you up with that prize package, okay? Here is Mike. You're on the DSC. Mike, what's going on? Uh, not much. How are you doing, Dave? I'm doing well. Good to have you here on the show. Why is your boss such a jerk? Uh, actually, my old boss got ripped off. Yeah, what and, happened? Um, he, we left Friday, locked up all our houses at a construction site, and I left my tools in the house I was working in. You're building a house? Yep. Yep. I was prepping a house. So I left my tools there, locked them in the closet. Come Monday, my tools are gone. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm looking all around, can't find him, can't find him, tell him, hey, look, my tools have been stolen, I don't know what's going on. And literally that day, he tells me, oh, you're worthless, you need to go home now, I could hire someone, or I could get someone from Labor Finders to do a better job. Time to find out, he was the one who took my tools. Oh, God. Mm. So he sent me home for stealing my tools. Jeez. That's pretty bad. All right, hold on. Let's get your phone number. Are you going to get numbers on all these folks, Emily? All right, very good. 888-570-1015. Kelsey, you're next here on the DSC. Hi, Kelsey. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. Now, Kelsey, you don't sound like you're old enough to have a boss. Well, it's my, my um, it was my last teacher. Well, your teacher's kind of like your boss. So, yeah. So tell me, what happened? Well, um... She's really old, and when she when she's like talking or sit, um, sitting at her desk, she'll kind of start falling asleep and start drooling. Mm. Oh no! 
Nice. And so, whenever, one time I tried walking up to her, I was going to tap on her shoulder to wake her up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She just woke up, and she started yelling at me, and I had to sit out recess and for, go to detention for like two months. Wow. Mm. Two months. Mm -hmm. That's harsh. Dang. I have something that... <laughs> 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 I have something that'll cheer you up, Kelsey. Ah, uh, here we go. We'll wind up in the pit. Because, you know, you're probably going to have more mean teachers before you're done yeah. with school. Kelsey, what grade are you in now? Are you uh, in fifth grade? I'm going to sixth right now. You're going to sixth, yeah. So you got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You're going to go to college? Yeah. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. You got eleven years of school left. I don't ever have to go to school again. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Does that make you feel better? Not really. Um, yeah. It cheers me up every time. I don't understand <laughs> it. Maybe you just got a bad attitude. Hold on, Kelsey. We'll get your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> You're so mean. Why is that mean? <laughs> because the poor little kids. You know, Shelly, it's a true story. It is true. It's the fact. It's mm -hmm. truth. Now, when 9 o'clock rolls around and there's a bomb falling in Iraq, I'm not going to say, Shelly, you're so mean. <laughs> and it's not Just actually, because you're telling me the truth. That's right. Spiteful and hateful, it gives Kelsey something to shoot for, something to look forward to. It encourages Kelsey that's right. to finish school. Thank What's you, the Chris label Boy. on that shirt you're wearing today, Dave? Do you I, don't, know? I, don't, I don't know why. I just want to see what the devil is wearing today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Marla, you're on the DSC. Yeah, I have a bad boss story. Yeah, let's hear it, Marla. I was verbally abused by a coworker, and when I complained to my boss, she told me I was going to have to take it because I was replaceable. Mm. So I said, fine, replace me. Mm. That what, showed her. What was the verbal abuse your coworker was giving you? She told me she didn't have to do a goddamn thing that I wanted her to. Mm. Well, by God. <laughs> and what kind of work do you do, Marla? Um, I was stripper. a stripper. Nurse. Uh, you're a nurse? Yeah. You see, you like, save that life. I don't have to I GD have to do, do a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Marla. See you later. Hi, you're on the DSC. Kyle? Yeah, this is him. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing fine. Worst uh, boss story. That's school. what I'm looking for. I do. When I was in high school, I worked at a photo lab, and uh, my grandfather passed away. And I wanted to go up with my dad to uh, spread my grandfather's ashes at one of our old fishing spots. But uh, my boss told me that if I were to leave for that weekend, I wouldn't be welcome when I got back. Oh, boy. Uh -huh. So I just stuck it out and said, you know, it's no big deal. Well, come to find out, uh, her friend or her daughter's friend also worked at this photo lab, and she managed to get the weekend off so she could go to her uh, homecoming dance. Mm-hmm. So needless to say, I wasn't working there too much longer. Yeah, no doubt. All right, thank you, Kyle. All right, thank yeah. you. Kathy, you're on the DSC. What's going on? Hi. Hi, Kathy. I um, worked at a restaurant. I worked, got called in. It was my day off, and he asked me to work. So I worked eight hours, and then I was trying to go home, and somebody called off sick, so he asked me if I'd stay. Worked double shift, and the policy is you have to eat dinner there mm -hmm. to get your free lunch. I said, no, I just want to make my salad, take it home. So I made it, I put it in my car, and he fired me for stealing a salad. Stealing a salad. You're out of here. Jeez. Yep. Mm. Nice. Thank you, Kathy. Steve, you're a great guy. Let's hear it, Steve. Hey, so I'm at a company party and uh, playing volleyball, and so I break my foot, and it goes into a cast. Ooh. Is that required? Got to break your foot? No, I just was uh, not as good as the rest of the people. Mm. Yeah. So anyway... Later on that night, he calls me at four in the morning uh, and says, "You got to get down here. We have a uh, a burglar in the uh, gymnasium downstairs. I was working for a social service agency downtown. So I say to my girlfriend, well, "How can this guy be doing this? We don't have to do that." But it's one of my first jobs, so I go, "Well, let's go down there. You know, I don't want the boss mad at me." So we go down there, and sure enough, there's stuff going on, and he sends me down there. With says, a broken yeah. foot. Did you tell him you had a broken foot? Uh, he could see my cast. <laughs> <laughs> it was plain. It was visible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so he goes, now you go down there. And I'm, I'm looking at my girlfriend. I'm like, 
come on, man. Yeah. So going down these stairs in the dark, there's no light. Sure enough, there is somebody down there, but he's as scared as we are, so he doesn't do anything. Right. So, you know, I, I guess... Sent you in to chase it. the bad guys out with a bad <laughs> wheel, right? That's right. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Steve. Jim, you're next here on the DSC. You got a bad boss story for me? Oh, yeah. Um, my old boss, he was... Uh, dating his ex-girlfriend who used to be his wife's best friend and she was uh leaving the office one day as his wife pulled in so his wife had a big fit and he told her don't worry about it honey she's here to see jim because jim's dating her now oh uh, <laughs> how'd the underside of that bus look nice god that's a bad one all right thank you dave you're on the dsc dave yes i uh got a great bad boss story let me hear it I was working at a sheet metal company in Colorado right out of high school, putting some grain on a piece of stainless steel, and it pulled my hand into the grainer, pulled off the skin off all the four fingers on my right <sighs> hand. Oh. And my boss tried to dispute the disability claim, saying that I wasn't hurt that bad. Oh, my God. Well, did you <laughs> die? <laughs> then yeah. you weren't hurt that bad. Flesh wound. <laughs> Flesh, truly. truly. Put some Tide on it, call it good. That's it. Thank oh. you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. 888-570-1015. I'm looking for the worst boss story of them all. I'm going to hook you up with that ticket package. You're going to see Eddie Money. You're going to go to Street Scene, and you're going to go to the Championship Off-Road Racing. All three events. Hard to get tickets for those anymore. 888-570-1015. I had a boss when I was working at WZPL mm -hmm. in Indianapolis. Worst program director I ever worked for. Not because he was incompetent or anything like that. Right. He was just an egomaniac jackass. Right. Ass. A-hole. Is this the one that was trying to dress you down because he had a... This some, is the one. Yeah. He was an A-hole. story. He was just mean. Yeah. And he used to love flexing his power. Mm hmm And I knew this to be true because I couldn't figure out what was going on. Right. I was doing afternoons at WZPL and it was kind of like a, a Channel 933 kind of radio station. Top 40. Very music intensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, he called me. He used to call every day on the hotline. The hotline is the little number that we have at all radio stations. And it's not the phone number that you guys call us on. It's basically for employees of the radio station. And sometimes the real egomaniac bosses install a special phone that only they have the number to. Yeah. So that when you see it ringing, and they usually hook up a big red light in the studio mm -hmm. to it. And it goes, eh, eh, eh. It might as well be like, your blood pressure's going up, your blood, you know, you're yeah. going to be terrified now. Because yeah. you're in trouble. They want to freak you out when yeah. it calls. Because you better know that I am calling. Right. And, uh, yeah, you know, you can always tell when you are interviewing for a job at a radio station, the more intricate the hotline system, mm -hmm. the bigger dick the program director <laughs> That's was. That's right. So true. <laughs> so, so anyway, true. this one day this guy is calling me uh, during the show, and I found out later from my friend who worked at the radio station who was in his office at the time that he was having a meeting with the record company guys, and he said, want to see me screw with our afternoon DJ? This is, is exactly what he said. Good Lord. You want to see me screw with our afternoon DJ? Watch this. I'll get them all, I'll get them all worked up. And so he kept calling me. He kept calling me during the show. And he'd yell at me and tell me what a crappy job I was doing. And I couldn't figure it out. Right. I couldn't figure it out. And he called me and called me. He called me like six times. And he was pissing me off so bad. And finally, like the sixth time, he's just telling me what a worthless scum, what a, just a jackass I am. I have no business working there. And I, and I was in commercials at the time. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I will save you the trouble of firing me. I quit. You got one minute to get down here. <laughs> And I walked out right. on the guy. Right. I walked off the air. Mm -hmm. That was great. I love that. I enjoyed that very much. <laughs> and was that a quit done out the door? No, because I walked out. I seriously did. I was like, then I'm out of here. Right. I, I seriously said, I will save you the trouble of firing me. Right. I quit. You've got one minute to dead air. I, I remember it was a Coca-Cola commercial running. <laughs> <laughs> And I shut it down. I love that. And I walked out. And I walked out. I walked out the back door to where the parking lot was. I was going out to my Nissan. Mm -hmm. And nice. uh, the general manager rolled up in his Jaguar. He's going, hey, where are you going? Yeah, What's the matter? You're off early. Oh. And I said, I just quit. 
Mark just hotlined me for the sixth time. I quit. You go, oh, come on. Wait you don't quit. Come on. <laughs> Put his big meaty arm right. around me. Come hey, on. on. <laughs> and you and Mark patch things up. No, Mark finally oh. got fired. Oh. Yes. Oh. Mark yes. finally got fired. Oh. The day we walked in that Mark got, uh, had gotten fired. There was a statue of Darth Vader that was hung in effigy in the studio. That was great. <laughs> that guy was Darth Vader. Jeez. I remember years later, I got a phone call. I only worked at that radio station for uh, almost a year. And I got a phone call saying that Mark had, uh, you know, done his eight billionth line of blow and had yeah. a heart attack and oh. crashed his car and da 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 da. Right. And you want to contribute to flowers. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! No, I don't want to contribute. And I don't even like you for <laughs> suggesting such a thing. God, no. All right. 888 570 1015. Around the KGB and Q103. Chainsaw is going to talk about the All Star game. Yes. And uh, the return to regular season baseball, part two. Yes. And then we'll continue talking to you. The worst devil boss of them all. You are on the radio with us next here on the DSC. All right, we're going to continue. We're looking for our own local devil wearing Prada. Worst boss story of them all. Picks up a triple play of tickets. Eddie Money. Street Scene. Championship Off-Road Racing. All three events for you. 888-570-1015. Putting you on the air right after this update on sports with a chainsaw here on DSC. Go Good morning and thank you, David. And have a look at everybody. In the sports world. In the Major League All-Star game last night in Pittsburgh, the National League had a 2-1 to -one lead with the Padres' Trevor Hoffman in for the save in the ninth inning. Two outs, two runners on, two strikes on Texas Rangers shortstop Michael Young. World Series home field advantage on the line. Here's the windup. The pitch swung on and lined into right center, a base hit. Uh -oh. And this ball will get to the wall. Oh, no. And two runs will score. Oh, no. Young around second, heading for third. The relay to third, not in time. A two-run triple by Michael Young with the American League down to its final strike. And they have taken a 3-2 to two lead here in the top of the ninth. And the Yankees' Mariano Rivera then saved it for the American League, which has secured home field advantage in the World Series with last night's victory. Sports fans, maybe it's just me. But when my team or my guy loses a big game, as a sports fanatic, I feel like a part of me has just died at that moment. This is very psychiatric, very Freudian. For me, it always associates to my first experience with death. The JFK assassination. Well, now, don't overdo it. Eight-year-old boy hoping against hope there will be good news from Dallas. Maybe it was just a flesh wound, but no. What kind of trip are you on anyway? Well, here's the good news and the good thing about sports. While it feels like someone died when your team loses, and a little bit of it did last night in the ninth inning, the good news is he didn't. Okay. Because here's Trevor. Two strikes over the middle plate isn't exactly a smart pitch to a guy like, like that, especially a uh, reigning batting champion. So, uh, um, you know, those things happen. Would have liked to have thrown a little more off the plate with two strikes and maybe go from there. But uh, should have, could have, would have isn't going to work. See, he's okay. And it's just a game after all. An uplifting story. Mm. Silver lining. Inspirational. It's what I do. You're an idiot. I sincerely hope you do not represent the future of this country because if you do, we are in sad shape. Hey, I agree with it. What are you talking oh, about? You see, it was just a flesh wound. <laughs> JFK! I like a son of a bitch. I'll bet it did. You know, they confirmed your death that day in uh -huh. Dallas, but JFK is alive and well. How you doing, sir? Who's death? Hmm? Not yours. No. Not mine. Yeah. I'm okay. They I got, like you, Cookie. I like you too, Mr. President. Okay. Is, is Lee Harvey Oswald in the house? This is JFK now. He don't want to talk. He's oh. all busted up over the game last oh, night. Oh, really? Oh, he won't get out of bed. The yeah. big the baseball fan. Really got him in the gut, didn't it? Oh, <laughs> my like God. A punch <laughs> Bent right over, just like good old times. Oh, good old times. Good old times. Yeah. Bye, Cookie. <laughs> See you later, JFK. Actually hiding out in a secluded, I think it's La Mesa apartment complex. 
uh, with Lee Harvey Oswald and Marilyn Monroe, who hmm. was sequestered in the bathroom with that always unbelievable yeah. suppository issue. Yep. <laughs> um, Italian soccer player Marco Materazzi, the victim of French superstar Zidane's now famous headbutt in the World Cup, admits that he tugged on the shirt and insulted Zidane, but denies he called him the son of a terrorist whore, as widely speculated. He actually called Zidane's mother... A devil who wears Prada. Because everybody in soccer knows the Don's mother shops exclusively at Target and is dedicated to their women's department. It's a very touchy subject in the Zidane family, and, and Matarazzi ruthlessly poked mm. a stick at it. Okay. Meanwhile, <laughs> in the National Bell. I used to, uh, I used to work as a secretary, and I had this really creepy, creepy boss who would always come up to me and say stuff like, <sighs> <laughs> I really, I really like it when you wear hair down like that. <laughs> is, is that a picture of her boyfriend? <laughs> Boy, if I were still his age, I'd give him a run for his money. <laughs> Why don't you, you come in the meeting and uh, take shorthand to cheer up the guys with your pretty face? Come on, smile for me. Mm. You look so much more beautiful when you smile. <laughs> like I go in his office and say stuff like, I, I really love the way your gray, curly neck hair comes <laughs> up over the edge of your peach, polyweave, sweat-stained sports shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me jealous with those pictures of your fat, angry wife. <laughs> Why don't you come in my cubicle and tell me more about my partial dental benefits after 90 days? <laughs> come on, smile for me. The fact that I net $6.49 an hour to provide you with the sexual stimulation you're not man enough to get in your personal life is so much more apparent when you smile. <laughs> get bald association. LeBron James has agreed to a three-year extension with the Cavaliers, three years, $60 million. Wow. And another James, Mike James, of the Minnesota Timberwolves, and I'm not making this up, agreed to play next year for $5 million, proving the old adage that no James is created equal. Oh, my. That's very thoughtful. Thoughtful turn of phrase there. That's funny. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> President. Hey, we're getting a new roommate. Oh, who you do? Have? You want to say hi? His name is Ken. Ken? You want to say hi to him? Love to say hello say to hi Ken. Hi Cookies. He's on KGB. Who? What? JFK now hiding right. out in his apartment with Lee Harvey Oswald has a new uh, roommate. Ken. Ken? Ken or Ken? Kenny? Yes, hello. Ken? Yes, this is Ken Lay. Oh, hey. oh. The old Dallas uh, Houston connection. Uh -huh. Yes, this is Ken Lay, Cookie. <laughs> How can I help you, Cookie? Well, I'm glad to hear that. So you did. The controversy and the, the conspiracy theorists are correct that you faked your own death. To avoid going to jail? Or oh, you figured that one out, Cookie. Give it all the money. Oh, very, very quick. <laughs> quick. I scam people out of eight zillion dollars and then, oops, died. <laughs> you, fell, you fell for that one, Cookie? Well, Ben, let me ask you something. Did you yes, at least cookie. upgrade the apartment? Because I know oh, for I a fact so. it was like four fifty a month mm -hmm. that ha Oswald and JFK were hanging out. Just because I have a zillion dollars, Cookie, doesn't mean I'm going to throw it away on eccentricity eccentricities and uh, very frugal cookie very frugal indeed now what what body did you uh use or substitute with the one they carted off we don't need to talk about these things come on cookie. who was it yeah. who was it it was the gardener it was the gardener been. like yeah. a landscaper mm -hmm. wow and you did live a lavish lifestyle. You had a, a luxury vacation home in Aspen and mansions in Houston and the whole Cayman Islands, you know, resort thing. Now you're just in an apartment in La Mesa? That's got to be a fall from grace. You'll come down. If that's how your imagination works, that's fine, <laughs> Shelly. Oh, yeah. We're cuckoo. You right, go ahead and think whatever you'd like, Shelly. <laughs> So do you have the $43 million that uh, the government had asked? I'm going to cease this uh, telephone call uh, now, uh, Shelley. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Well, uh -oh. well, well, it was a pleasure speaking uh -oh. with you folks today. Yes. Enjoy your little radio broadcast. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny Boy. Hi, Cookie. <laughs> See you later, Johnny. Well, I call was, him Jack. That's Johnny Jack. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> nice.
growing apartment over there. It really is. Did you get the couch? Is there an arrow bed? Something. <laughs> 7.38 in two seconds. This is your 101.5 KGB Sports Network. Oh, my. All right, standing room only here at the DSC. We're going to talk to you next about the worst boss ever. The devil wears Prada, and he or she works in your office. And the best story takes that triple play of tickets. Chainsaw was brought to you by Bulls Only Rodeo 8. It's coming back Friday and Saturday at 7.30, the Lakeside Arena. It's brought to you by El Cajon Ford and produced by the Lakeside Optimists. Sanctioned by the IPRA. Tickets, 15 bucks for grown-ups. Eight for kids. Call 619-443-2447 or go to bullsonlyrodeo.com. Small. We're tearing up the track today at the Miramar Speed Circuit. Want you to join us? Go to 101kgb.com. Get registered. We race there every Wednesday. Rain or shine indoor on the quarter mile asphalt. It's brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Your place to get the good stuff. Your car, your truck, your bus, your lawnmower, your forklift, whatever. Get the good stuff at Napa. And you can register at 101kgb.com. Traffic report brought to you by the Sleep Train Mattress Center, slowing on the East County routes. Westbound on the 8 Freeway, leaving La Mesa, Jackson Drive, down the hill towards San Diego State. And more traffic as you approach the 15 transition ramp. Northbound 15, there's some slowing out of City Heights, starting at El Cajon Boulevard as you make your way up past the 8 toward Friars Road. If you're in the North County, you're used to this in Escondido. Southbound 15, just before the 78 as you head down past Lake Hodges. And now some more slowing showing up toward the Miramar Air Station. Southbound 5, the slowing, there's a couple of pockets, one up in Car. Carl's bad, and then some more as you make your way down from Encinitas, past Cardiff, down toward Del Mar. Westbound side of the 56, we've got some slowing here approaching the 5 from Carmel Creek Road out to the 5. And out of the South Bay, both the 805 and the 5 are slow from 8th Street up toward the 54. The 5 takes you some more uh, slowing into downtown. We're shaking things up at Dairy Queen with a new caramel chip cheese quake blizzard. Cheesecake pieces, chocolate chunks, and caramel top blended in a creamy DQ vanilla soft serve only at Dairy Queen. I'm Mark Sanchez with Dave Shelley and Chainsaw on the 101.5 KGB. Yes, no, maybe. I don't know. Can you repeat the question? You're not the boss of me. Number one, because it's the boss. That's what bosses do. Yeah. Seriously, if your boss doesn't suck, your boss isn't doing your job. And it's true. 888-570-1015. Direct Connect here at the KGB. Let's find out who's got the worst one. Hillary, you're on the DSC. What's up? Oh, my story is sad, but it's what brought me to San Diego. All right. I was the manager of an accounting department up in the Bay Area, and one of my employees was not performing the way they should be, so the boss, the president of the company, just reamed on me and explained that's why she was paying me the salary that I was responsible for them, da-da-da-da-da. Well, I got so upset, it was just before lunch, that I actually left early to go to lunch. And as I was pulling out of the parking lot, I got hit, T-boned, oh. and the fire department came, the police came, everybody came, and the boss never left the building to see if I was okay. Right. And that was it. And you decided I'm thing, done with them. I had a 1970 Chevelle yes. SS, and that car today is worth a lot, and the car was totaled. Oh. Oh. Now you're breaking Boyer's yeah. heart. Yeah, <laughs> he's crying. It was so sad, yeah. so horrible. I waited about a month, and I quit, and I moved to San Diego, but the fact that I had been there five years, and my boss never even came out to see if I was okay. Other employees did, but, you know, I was mm -hmm. upset. It was my fault for pulling out into traffic, but it just sucked. The whole thing sucked. When was this, Hillary? Uh, this was back in 1992. See, that's when San Diego got cool, when you mm -hmm. came here. Well, that's, it. that's the way it goes. Thank you, Hillary. You're welcome. Put you on the list there for the worst boss story of them all. Scott, you're on the DSC. Well, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> well, I got one for you, man. All right, let's hear it. Well, I uh, just graduated uh, college, and I was the uh, low man on the totem pole in this uh, marketing department. And uh, they needed to fill in a, uh, another position in the marketing department. And the boss makes the announcement to the marketing department that uh, he's on the final interview with this uh, applicant, and he wants everybody to go in and talk to her when uh, she comes in and see if you know she'll be a good fit. 
So, and you know, he didn't say that to anybody in particular, just to everybody in general. So, uh, she comes in and she's hot. And so I'm thinking, all right, this is good, this is good. She, uh, everybody goes and talks to her. The boss is out of the office, uh, he just stepped out so we could talk to her in his office. Well, I decide I'm gonna go in there and, uh, you know, see if, uh, she's gonna be a good fit. And, uh, so I'm in there talking to her, not just a few minutes. Boss comes back walks in the office, looks at me, looks at her, and then says, what are you doing in here? I said, uh, just like you said, uh, I'm just going to talk to the applicant here. And she looks at he looks at her and uh, says, you don't need to talk to him. Get out of my office. Ooh. <laughs> I'm like, tail between my legs. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> little public belittling, huh? Yeah, just a little. That's just always fun. Little. Yeah. Nah, that's so. fun. All right, thank you, Scott. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nick, you're on the DSC. Good morning, Dave. What's up, man? I uh, got a boss story. From Let me hear. Phoenix. We, uh, I worked for an all-night uh, restaurant that, uh, you know, like a Denny's type of place back in the 80s, and uh, we had a regional manager that just had no heart. One uh, one Friday night, we were held up. The uh, the manager on duty was uh, so shaken up, they actually had to, had to leave um, after dealing with that. We were not allowed to close. So I was stuck holding the bag, and I was just a short order cook. The same guy, eight months later, in a different location where I was working, we had a water main break where a car had actually run up on there, knocked over the fire hydrant, and come like right up on the porch of the store. He wouldn't let us close then either. And the kicker was when the health department came out to turn, you know, to deal with the water shortage. Cause, I mean, we were melting ice to give to the customers. Yeah. We had no running water, no bathrooms. It's a Friday night bar rush. You know the drill. And <laughs> when the health department came out there, because I was the only, I was the senior guy in the building, he threw me under the bus as making the decision not to close. Oh, my so God. It was awful. Um, Marty Rosenberg, yeah. He was a piece oh, of we're going to name him. All right, Marty Rosenberg. Never liked Marty Rosenberg. Mm-mm. Hi, Cheryl. Good morning. How are you? Good. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks, Dave. What you doing today? What am I doing? I'm working, unfortunately. What kind of work? I'm an environmental management representative. Whatever that means. <laughs> what do you take care of the tree? What does yeah, that mean? I'm up in a tree today. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, I run a. It's going to bore you to death. You're going to go to sleep. Come on. Um, <laughs> I run. A, I run an environmental management program. So I work um, making sure we have an ISO fourteen thousand one program, uh, meaning that we help protect the environment while we do our job. Are you awake, Dave? Hello. I got you. I, I understand what you're saying. That's cool. I understand what you're saying. That's cool. Okay, sorry. Very good, Cheryl. All right, tell me about your boss from hell story. Oh, my boss from hell story. I was about 19 years old, and I worked two jobs at the time. And my nighttime job was working at, this is going to date myself, Dave, I was working for Walker Scott in Mission Valley. Now, how old were you at the time? I was 19. (laughs) What were you wearing at the time? (laughs) I can't tell you. (laughs) Normal work clothes. All right. All right. So I was working there at nighttime, and I had a date scheduled that night, and I was excited I was going out on my date. My time at the end of the store cl- the store closed. We were all getting ready to leave. The boss locked us in the store and told us we had to go fold all the granny, well, she didn't call them granny panties, but we had to fold all the panties until they looked pretty. Well, there was no chance of them ever looking pretty. We thought we were trapped there forever. Yeah. <laughs> Folding panties. Hi, honey. I can't come to the date. I'm folding panties. Oh, oh you just horrible. hate me. It was horrible. Yeah, that's a bad one. Yeah, all right. it, was, it was not a good thing. And we never really got them all looking good because they were huge. They were the ones that nobody ever wanted to even be near. Anyway. You know what it is, Cheryl, though? It's like what? every step along the way got you to where you are today, protecting the environment. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how the link was made between folding granny panties and getting here, but but you're right. It's hey, you know all what? part of my journey. Mm-hmm. You know what? Seriously, think about it. Mm-hmm. Eradicating the landscape of granny panties <laughs> makes it a more beautiful <laughs> environment that for is everybody. True. <laughs> and those granny panties protected the environment of a lot of pants. <laughs> granny panties don't even look good on grannies. No, Mm-mm. oh, they don't. No. <laughs> Are you wearing granny panties right now, Cheryl? I am not. I've been scarred for life. I can never wear those. That a girl. <laughs> Thanks, Cheryl. Thank you, Dave. See you later. Thanks, bye. Dear Dave, my old boss was a complete a-hole. I was relatively new to my position working for a radio station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I knew this was coming. Yeah, here we go. (laughs) A syndicated radio personality. 
I was in my second week of employment, and the man was not having a good day. Oh, no. He was yelling at everybody in the business while recording his show. Something about coming out of an upbeat song and going straight <laughs> into talking about someone's dog dying. Right. I was thinking it wasn't a big deal. Man, build a bridge and get over it, dude. Uh -huh. Then it happened. <laughs> oh, no. I realized I had forgotten to send him some pictures, and ah! he chewed my ass on the air. Man, what an a-hole. Love your show. Don. 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 But. <clears throat> See, when you come out of those up-tempo damn numbers, man, it's impossible to make those transitions. And then you got to go into somebody dying. You know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for, but damn it, if we can't come out of a slow record, I don't understand it. Is Don on the phone? Okay, I want a <laughs> damn concerted effort to come out of a record that isn't a f***ing up-tempo record mm. every time I do a damn death dedication. Mm. Now, make it, and I also want to know what happened to the pictures I was supposed to see this week. This is the last damn time I want somebody use a f***ing brain to not come out of a damn record mm -hmm. that is, uh, that, that's up-tempo, and I got to talk about a f***ing dog dying. <laughs> Come on, talk like Shaggy. <laughs> I would so have done that. You know you're fired anyway. Right. The minute he finished his rant, I would have been, mm -hmm. come on, do Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Scoob. We're never going to get out of this one alive, Scoob. <laughs> wouldn't see the humor in that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get in the Magic Mobile, Scooby, and get out of here quick. Let's go get a sandwich, Scoob! <laughs> well, I thought it was funny. I do, too. <laughs> I don't think Casey slept on a sleep train that I night. I bet you're right. Obvious. No. In fact, I don't think any of these bosses have a sleep train. If they did, you wouldn't be waiting on hold to tell me what an a-hole your boss is. You know what the sleep train does? It chases the a-holiness away. Uh, that could be their new slogan. It chases the a-holiness away. They're <laughs> writing it down right now. Well, you know, you know they are. They're a little clumsy yet. It's mm -hmm. rough. It's rough, okay? <laughs> it's a nugget. Polish it. <laughs> Sleep Train San Diego. Seeley, Simmons, Stearns and Foster. Select Comfort Tempur-Pedic. <sighs> the Swedish pressure-relieving sleep system. That sounds pretty good to me. You know, they come with the lowest guaranteed price. No one beats their price. That's a 90-day guarantee. Just in case someone decides to have a fire sale, you're covered. And on your good credit, the, the savings get even bigger. Go on in there, shop today. Do it early. They'll deliver it today. That's right. They'll deliver it today for free. They'll set it up for free wherever you want it. Up those stairs, no problem. Want the old one gone? We'll do that, no problem. Sleep Train San Diego. Your ticket to a better night's sleep. Hello? Hello? Who is this? <laughs> this is Debbie. Debbie! Debbie! Hi, Debbie! Hi, Dave. How are you, Debbie? I'm fine. Welcome to the KGB and Q103. Well, I've got a story for you. About a bad boss? About a really witchy boss. A devil boss. Mm. Yeah. That's too bad. Tell me your story, Debbie. So when I was 17, just out of high school, I moved to Deming, New Mexico to live with my dad. About a population, 1,200 people. And there was one McDonald's in that town, and I got a job there. The Bacon McPickle time. muffins. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was about the time when Chicken McNuggets came out. Yeah. And... She found out I was from California, so she always treated me like crap, and she made me do... Because you're toilet. cool, and you're from right. California, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did not like California. Right. So, every day, trash and toilet duty, every single day. Yeah. Oof. And so, all of a sudden, this chicken suit arrived, and Demi, New Mexico is out in the middle of the desert, mm -hmm. and it was about 120 degrees out that day, mm -hmm. and she said, oh, you get to do something different today, and she stuck me out in that freaking chicken suit. The freaking chicken suit. 120 <laughs> degree weather, and by the end of the day, they were pulling the suit off of me, yeah. and my mom picked me up with heat exhaustion. Right. Oh. They should have called them that. They should have called them Chicken McFrickin' Nuggets. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'd get them just have. to say it into the little I speaker. I would, too. Some of those Chicken McFrickin' Nuggets. 
Yeah. All right. Thanks, so that's Debbie. That's my story. Very good. Thanks. Love your show. Thanks. I love yours. Shelly, you're next year on the DSC. You got a boss from hell story? I do. Let's I hear have it. A boss. It was right before Christmas, and I went into work, worked at a photo lab, told my boss I didn't feel well. She says, oh, you got all next week off. You're not leaving. And about an hour later, I went back to her, and I said, hey, something's really wrong. But And I was also about six months pregnant at the time. Uh. Told her something's really wrong. I really should go. And she says, nope, get back to work. Sat down, passed out cold, woke up in the hospital, and had to stay there a week over Christmas. Look, pregnant lady, get back over that vat of chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> what was wrong with you? Um, I had every infection you could imagine. I had kidney infection, a oh. bladder infection, urinary tract infection. and Baby. Yeah. <laughs> and she made me stay until I passed out. Yeah. And uh, did you say anything to her after you got back on your feet? Oh, she she brought me in some flowers and apologized up and down and felt good. really bad that the ambulance had to come get me from cool. work. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Did they... Uh, did they have to ambulance you away? Yes. Ooh, oh, I bet that made her feel so good. Yeah, no yes. kidding. Yeah. All right, Shelly, way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie, you're on the DSC. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Better now that you're on the show. Tell me what your world is like today. I, um, my world sucks today. But Why? I have the best story. I have the winning story right here. Why does your world suck today? Oh, just because I'm working a temp job and I, I really don't feel like being here. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Rather be at that's, the beach. That's why it's temp. It's not going to last. No, but my story, it's, it's going to win, hands down. All this right, let's it. hear it. Um, I was working, I'm a pastry chef, and I was working for a bakery um, here in San Diego. I really shouldn't say the name, but it was in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the wife, it was a husband and wife uh, team that owned it, and the wife was schizophrenic, psychotic. One day, she's my best friend. The next day, she hated me. I hate that. Her. I hate that. So, yeah. Oh, I mean, what it was you expect? So I'm making some sort of dessert. I don't know. And she got all ticked off that I did something wrong. Went over to the stove, grabbed a pot that had hot melting chocolate in it. Uh-oh. Threw it at my head. Oh! I, I dumped. It hit the wall. Chocolate went everywhere. It went down my bath, all over. My clean, uh, clean white chef coat. Chocolate was everywhere. She I threw a pot of boiling <laughs> chocolate, chocolate at your head. God. My head. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what the hell are you doing? And she was like, I didn't do anything. What are you talking about? I didn't do anything. Uh, uh, and I'm looking at the chocolate dripping down the wall going, uh -huh. okay. It was one of her other personalities who did it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I uh, threw my apron on the floor and was like, you can send my check tomorrow. And she was yeah. like, no, no, no. We have to hold your check for two weeks. Yeah. So I, I kindly uh, printed out all of the rules and regulations from San Diego website saying right. that they had 72 days to pay me. And uh, I don't think she was too happy about that. Good but. God. Yeah. Jamie, I didn't I didn't know how serious you were when you said that you were going to win this contest. I'm not saying oh, yeah. you have yet. Hands down. Hands not, down, it's me. Yeah, I'm not I'm not saying you have because I'm gonna give some other folks a chance yet, but that's, that's very that's high. very, very strong. And you know what? I gotta tell you something, Jamie. There's a very chick thing. If you're watching T V and you see some sort of uplifting story like um there'll be a woman on there who's like her head's gotten cut off <laughs> and you know, then they sew it onto her knee and you know, she struggles bravely on and right. you see her husband there helping her you know, get into the car because it's hard for her to see because now her head's on her knee and all that other stuff. And, <laughs> you know, a chick will always turn to her guy and say, would you take care of me if that happened to me? <laughs> chicks do that. Uh -huh. You know, chicks yeah. always do that. They find some horrible, ghastly situation. Would you stay miserable for the rest of your life like that, that happened to me? <laughs> we were watching this thing because this girl who, do, who did this to you, obviously... Multiple personalities. It sounds oh, like it. Easily. There was this thing on TV last night we were watching. This woman had 22 personalities. Oh, my God. 22. Oh my God. First of all, I am far too lazy to be <laughs> schizophrenic. I'm just too exactly. lazy to be schizophrenic. It's it's too much work. It's hard enough to keep up with one personality. Trying to remember all those names. Uh-huh. 22 no names. Good no Lord. Way. I don't know anybody who works here in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't remember all of my own names. Right. <laughs> I, uh, I said to Nicole, I just want you to know. I don't have the patience for 22 personalities. <laughs> I'm putting that one right up front. Of course, it'd be like getting a new piece of ass every night for a month. Yeah, but it's too much work. 22 mm -hmm. personalities. Oh, I don't this isn't the one that likes to get spanked. She likes the dirty talk. It's Marcy that likes to spank. <laughs> have you guys ever known anybody who is schizo? Literally, truly schizo. And Not li names no. for their various personnel. No. No. I mean, it's fascinating in a in a oh my god car wreck kind of way you know train wreck it's fascinating and i never know what to know yeah exactly fascinating until one of those personalities snaps and ruins everything you had planned. and starts throwing hot chocolate then everywhere. it's not fascinating fascinating anymore
Jeez. When uh, when she threw uh, a pot of chocolate at you and it went down your back and everything, mm-hmm. did, you, did you have the ultimate indignity? Were you crying? I I was very um, I was very calm about it. Mm-hmm. I took off my apron, I threw it in the corner and walked out the door, and that was it. And I was I didn't want to make a big scene about it. I was like, that's it. I'm done. I can't take this anymore. Did you cry later on? Wait, yeah, all the way home. Oh. <laughs> all the way home. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I know it seems like I care, but I just wanted to play Van Halen. Oh, I know. <laughs> That's a Very great one, thing. Jamie. Put you right at the front of the list. Woo. Thanks, Jamie. Because I'm a split personality. Mm. I'm two people in one. <laughs> okay, Buster. All right. The a hole boss. Jamie's the one to beat. That's strong. A flying pot of chocolate mm-hmm. whipped at her head. <laughs> and then the denial. I didn't do anything. That Jamie, man, she's got quick reflexes. <laughs> she ducked. <laughs> That's why you never throw a pot of chocolate at the head. You go for the body shot. Yeah. Can't duck. That's right. They teach you that in chef school. <laughs> 888-570-1015. You're on KGB and Q103. Triple play of cool tickets for the worst boss story of them all. Coming up here, the KGB. Here I am at San Diego Zoo's new monkey trails, where self-proclaimed expert in simian linguistics, Dr. Ben Welsh, is going to help us translate the sounds of what are believed to be the world's happiest monkeys. So what are they saying, doctor? That mandrel there, he's saying, sunshine on my shoulders makes me happy. Of course, in the Northern African mandrel dialect, this means, Patricia, you is my woman now. Of course. And a little bueno. Something like, I just love the smell of three acres of monkey paradise in the morning, which metaphorically speaking means, I wish I owned an Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile. See, monkey's frame of reference is very different to ours. They have different interests, like they don't have a word for, say, jelly or shot put. Mm -hmm. And ooh, ooh, what does that mean? Yeah, this means monkey trails, lovely. Which ooh is monkey and which ooh is trails beats me. Interesting. And the mangabe? Yeah, he's literally saying, ooh, ow, ow. Like, you know, when you stub your toe. Maybe you should come and see for yourself why San Diego Zoo's new monkey trails is where every monkey would love to live. Visit San Diego Zoo's nighttime zoo. No entertainment, new animal encounters. The fun starts at 4 p.m. now through September 4th. Not even the luckiest guy in the world will go through life without the delivery guy for getting his coke. But we can't blame them. Their title is pizza delivery guy. Or Chinese food delivery guy. Not Coca-Cola delivery guy. You'd be way more shocked if they remembered the Coke and forgot the fried rice. So give the delivery guy a break. He's worked four pro football seasons, three NCAA March Madness tournaments, seen the rise of NASCAR and the blizzard of 2002. We should be offering him the Coke. From those little bubbles that jump out of the bottle to that first icy rush, is there anything better than a refreshing Coke? This great deal, maybe. Stop by participating 7-Eleven stores and pick up a coupon to save a dollar when you buy a Big Eats sandwich and a 20-ounce bottle of Coke while supplies last. Hey, the folks at your next community home, San Alijo Hills, are excited to announce that construction's getting ready to start on the restaurants, the grocery store, the gas station, and so much more. All that will be walking distance from your new home that make... Living at San Alijo Hills, a dream of convenience. Come see what's in store for you at the future. San Alijo Hills, on top of San Alijo Road, is open every day from 10 to 5. Call 888-SAN Alijo. That's 888-S-A-N-E-L-I-J-O. Three million people are on the go in San Diego, and most of them go in their cars. You probably noticed that at rush hour. Because of this, San Diego has an intense need for roads and freeways that move. Local home builders are doing their part to ease your commutes by building or paying for new roads all the time. They just invested another $800 million as part of Transnet funding. You can see that list of roads at biasandiego.org. 
Home builders are good neighbors who invest in your community. A message from the San Diego Building Industry Association. If you're a San Diego area homeowner searching for a way to reduce your monthly payments and escape the pressures of debt, let me tell you how one simple phone call will save you more money than ever before. I'm Hayes Barnard, owner of Paramount Equity, and I'm proud to say our mortgage bank just launched several new loan programs that are shocking our neighbors with incredibly low rates. So if anyone tells you the refinance boom is over, give us a call and we'll show you how just last month we wowed over 600 families with our ability to save them money. This is your chance to enhance your quality of life by taking advantage of our guarantee to beat any written rate and fee structure. Regardless of your credit situation, make that five-minute call right now and I'll even pay for your home to be appraised. Call 325-2000 today. Paramount Equities, the San Diego company committed to saving our neighbors money. Call 6 one nine three two five two thousand. DRE number zero one three eight seven 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 five. Hey, Chris from Tweeter here. Remember when you were a kid, how you'd scoot up close to the screen to watch TV? Do you know why you did that? To immerse yourself in the experience. Well, today there's a better way: high definition. Start with a fifty-inch plasma. The giant high def picture puts you right in the middle of the action. And Tweeter has killer sets from Panasonic, Pioneer Elite, and Toshiba. Prices start at just $27.99. And right now, you can buy any 50-inch plasma with no money down, no interest, and no payments for 12 months when you have our ACE technicians install it. And you should. Tweeter's built one of the largest installation teams in the nation. Now, just like you wouldn't put cheap gas in a race car, you don't want to feed that 50-inch high-def plasma just any old signal. Try Samsung's cool new high-def Blu-ray disc player with 1080p. A 50-inch plasma and Blu-ray. That'll scoot your chair back. Tweeter, home and mobile entertainment made easy. Find a store or shop online at tweeter.com. See store for details. With Chrysler, experience the best in American and German engineering and design. Get employee pricing plus. Well-qualified buyers can save big with 0% APR financing or a generous cash allowance on most Chrysler vehicles. Check out AskDrZ.com for more details. Traffic report brought to you by the Sleep Train Mattress Centers. On the northbound side of the 15, there was an accident right before the 8 transition. So slowing out of City Heights, starting from just before University Avenue as you head down the hill toward the 8 freeway. If you're on the 15 southbound up in Escondido, the usual slowing in Escondido. And now there's an accident blocking the second lane from the left. Southbound 15 right before Ted Williams Parkway. Medical crews on the scene there blocking the second lane from the left. And it looks like they're starting to block the fast lane also. So two left lanes block southbound 15 right before Ted Williams. The backup right now is just before Carmel Mountain Road. So call it Camino del Norte down toward Ted Williams on that second pocket of 15 south. Coastline ride is slow now starting from La Costa Avenue down toward Manchester and the 56 West slows the last couple of exits toward the 5 freeway. Out of the East County, the 8 freeway is pretty busy. There was an accident, a hit and run westbound 8 near the 125. We do have some slowing uh, turning right as you make your way out toward the 125 on the westbound side of the 8 from El Cajon. Further out, La Mesa slows down the hill from Lake Murray as you make your way past San Diego State down toward the 15 and continues slow all the way out toward the 805 transition. Don't worry, there's more slowing up ahead as you make your way out through Hotel Circle. Oh, yeah, from Hotel Circle out toward the 5. We're shaking things up at Dairy Queen with a new caramel chip cheese quake blizzard. Cheesecake pieces, chocolate chunks, and caramel topping blended with a creamy DQ vanilla soft serve. Also available in Oreo or strawberry only at DQ. I'm Mark Sanchez with Dave Shelley and Chainsaw on the 101.5 KGB. DSC at 101KGB.com. Gina writes to me, Dave... It was either the Italian pig I worked for who wanted me to sit on his lap while wearing the mandatory miniskirt. Ew, I had to quit that job. Yeah. Or another boss who was upset because we would not reveal who played a practical joke at work on another co-worker. And so he took four of us into the conference room, screamed at us, uh. saying that we must have thought of ourselves as God's little angels for not telling. The veins on his head and neck were bulging as he turned the lights off and slammed the door, leaving us in the dark, closed-up conference room. And he only got angrier when we broke out into peals of laughter as he stomped <laughs> away. We turned him into HR and he had to apologize to each of us for his oh, behavior. Oh, delicious. Sweet. That's nice. All right, I got a couple more here to take. Jamie's the one to beat right now. Christina, you're on the DSC. What's going on? 
Oh, I don't know if I could be Jamie, but... Boss from hell story. Anyway. Boss from hell. <laughs> I used to work um, for a uh, psychologist's office. And when I started working there, they the office manager told me how um, caring and understanding they were about everything. And if we needed help, blah, 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 just let us... They're let good them, people. Know. <laughs> yeah, good right. people. Good people. Worked there for three years. You know, come in early, never called in sick unless it was absolutely necessary. Right. Numerous turnovers of other people. And then I had a baby prematurely. Um, he was almost three months premature. Oh. And he was still in the hospital, the NICU at this time. And I was working part time, going back from work into the hospital to visit my son. And, um, didn't have to be there. And, um, my husband got a call. He's a Marine. He got a call about three days before he was going to be shipped out to Iraq. It was like on a Tuesday. And I asked for a fr the Friday off before that same Friday on that week. And she said, no. No. And I said, what? <laughs> and she said, I always get Fridays off. Oh, Friday's and my I day said, off. Mm. Yeah, her yeah. day. And I was like, you know what? I don't need this. And I don't want to work for somebody who doesn't support the, the, the Americans. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so not going to sit here and listen to you bad mouth the United States of America. My friends, gentlemen. <laughs> so I, get, so I told her, you gave me no choice, and I walked out. Yeah. Good for you. All right. Thanks, Christina. Thanks. That's a very good one. Greg, you're next here on the DSC. Hello? Hi. Dave. Yes. I had the boss from hell. Tell me. Um... He went on vacation, and my father had been sick for a long time, and uh, we uh, we had him in the hospital, and they said, uh, either uh, call hospice or get him in a convalescent home. So I called my boss, and I, I said, hey, I know you're on vacation and everything, but I need you to come in here because here's what i got to do. You know, I've got to take care of my father. And he said, well, no, what if I was in Hawaii or something? So I told him, well, I'm closing up the shop, and I'm going to take care of business. So I did that and came back to work and covered it. Anyhow, uh, about a week later, my father passed away. So I called him on Tuesday, and I said, my father passed away. I'm going to be out of work for about a week. i got to make these plans and take care of this stuff. And he said, okay. So lo and behold, he called me on Thursday. He says, hey, when are you coming back to work? I said, I I'm going to be off work for a couple more days. He said, oh, no, you gotta, you got to shake it off and forget it. Just get back up on the horse. Shake it off. Huh? Yeah. 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 That's nice. Yeah, he was a real sweetheart. Still working for him? No, he got fired. Good thing. Aww. All right, right on. Thank you, Greg. Hi. Bye, man. Hey, Matt, you're on the DSC. Hey. What's up? You want the whole story? Or... <laughs> Give me the condensed version. Okay. I used to work for the railroad. and All the live long day? <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> uh -huh. I was a conductor at the time, and we were going <laughs> go through a crossing, and a guy stood in front of our train, and we ran him over. Oh, no. And, uh... It, it wasn't that. It didn't seem that bad. We didn't want to get out and look. Didn't, didn't want to go see the ick? <laughs> I, yeah, we figured he spied it all over the front of the train. Yeah, you betcha. I don't want to see that. How fast were you going? So we finally got out and yeah. went out, and he wasn't out there. I walked back to the crossing, and he's laying in the middle of the crossing, cut to pieces. Cut to pieces. Still alive. Still Pretty alive. Much. In two pieces? Yeah, well, I tore, we tore his leg off. He was good as dead, but... Yeah. Oh. Uh, he's still alive. <laughs> like that internet no, video. Right. What's that? Go ahead. So, yeah. So we go back. This is kind of late at night. And uh, we're supposed to get a few days off for that. Yeah, you run over a guy with a train. They they give you a couple of days to think about it. <laughs> yeah, no, they don't. Oh. I, they gave us a phone number to call. Yeah. And if you didn't call that phone number in eight hours... Uh, they automatically, my road foreman automatically put me back on the board to go to work. So I get oh. a call the next morning to go to work, and I'm like, wait a minute, aren't I, I'm supposed to be off here. Yeah, I'm all like, freaked oh, out from I cutting that guy in half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, they're like, no, uh, they put you back on the board to work. So I was back in, at work within like eight hours or something like yeah. that. Ah. Matt, was this guy committing suicide, or was he not looking where he was going? Uh, yeah, I think it was suicide. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the one good thing about being a DJ. No one ever throws themselves mm -hmm. in the path of your speeding radio show. Because <laughs> that's, you know, that's a tough one to carry around, you know? It is, yeah. yeah. All right, Wire thanks, man. does it from time to time. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Bit suicide. Jim, you're on the DSC. Dave. Hello. I would like to preface this story by saying I quit my job at Taco Bell at 16 years old, making $1.30 an hour to go up to 2 dollars an hour. 
to be a busboy, and, uh, and the job was to do everything around the restaurant and bar. When was this, 1810? <laughs> Sorry. I'm giving my age away. Yeah. Uh, we had a Christmas party. Great time. Everybody partying, got to bed late. And I was scheduled to work the next morning, very little sleep. So I came in and primed it with a screwdriver with the cook and got ready to go to work. And the boss comes out and tells me, uh, had a little mishap in the bathroom. Someone broke the toilet! <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you know, when someone's, there, there is, there is a case of, uh, you know, when you exaggerate, you make something way bigger than it is. What is it when you do the diminish. opposite? You, when you diminish the truth, when someone says there's been a little mishap in the bathroom, they yeah. are so it's a holocaust. <laughs> yeah. covering up the truth. <laughs> there's no little mishap in the bathroom. A little mishap in the bathroom is what? You're out of toilet paper. Someone dropped, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's a little worse than that. That's something you take care of yourself. When no. someone has to come out and tell you that there's a little mishap in the bathroom. That means a war just broke out in there. Mm -hmm. A and colon war. And the totem pole, the piss hat, to go clean it, you know what it means. Oh. Yeah. So, anyway, you know, the, you guys had your toilet contest. You know the one that wins, that gorilla toilet that the sucked the chrome off a bumper hitch, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, they had three of them lined up in this bathroom, and oh, we had no. a pretty, pretty heavy party that night. A lot of people going in and out of the bathroom. <laughs> oh, no. no. Mm. I'm not going to go into detail, but uh, uh, I was in there two hours with a hose and gloves and boots, oh. working the ceiling and the walls <laughs> on Christmas morning at 6 o'clock, drunk on screwdrivers. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's pretty good. Oh. That's you pretty good. more to win this contest? <laughs> Man, that's pretty good, Jim. It's a good one. All right, thank you. Okay. Which Put you in the run. Cindy Pace holds down middays, the hardest job there is here at KGB, mm -hmm. and she's got a bad Oh, no, story. you're nice. You're just being nice because you got, gave me a new reputation for leaking the other day. You're the one who brought it up, <laughs> girlie, not me. Which kind of scares me to call today because I know where my reputation's headed. But I used to have a boss um, at my first radio station. We had switched from oldies. This was Colorado Springs. Yeah. Radio. Good morning. <laughs> K-Peak. The K-Mountain. <laughs> And we switched to Top 40. Yeah! Oh, good. Where's my yeah. wig? Top 40 on Credo, Colorado. My new boss used to come into the studio right before he knew I had to open up the microphone and mm -hmm. let blast the most nauseating, oh, putrid, no. rotten gas. Oh, no. And then he would just <laughs> smile like the Cheshire Cat and leave. Good morning. Everybody. What, uh, what radio name were you using there? Um, I was Cindy Haynes. That was my maiden name. Cindy what? Cindy Haynes, like gentlemen prefer. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, yeah. We get our hands on you. Yeah, we like this. We we like the the saucy DJ girls who name themselves after lingerie. You know. <laughs> Hi. That was my real name. I had no split personality. <laughs> yeah, my name is Cindy Panties. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Nice. But you know what? The worst part was when it was a weekend at night and he came in drunk and tried to stick his big hammy tongue in my mouth. Damn. Oh. He had a hammy tongue? Hammy. He had a, a hammy, hammy tongue and a wife at home. He had a oh. hammy tongue. Oh, oh, oh. Hmm. But I was 19 and didn't know about HR. But that's <laughs> I'm going to Eddie Money, so don't worry about me. I'm making stage announcements. Damn. Damn. Oh, are, are, you, uh, are you welcoming uh, Eddie Money on? Well, I don't know if I actually get to introduce him. Sometimes they're weird about that with DJs. Yeah, I know. They think they think you're gonna like you know cuss them out or something like that. <laughs> you know, like a fool of myself. You know, like that has ever happened. It's so true that DJs are the you know so least trusted people. Mm -hmm. They I get don't know so. Why. And you know, I, I'll tell you something. Here's what I don't understand. If you get a job being a DJ, they make you sign eight billion documents. Right. Okay. No, you can't say poo. You can't say penis. Mm -hmm. You can't say mm -hmm. yeah, you can't mm -hmm. say this. Can't say that. Don't be don't be offensive. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. Now here's the keys to our fifty thousand watt radio station. Yeah. Go. <laughs> be free. <laughs> right. You know. And you better be funny. There's nothing stopping us from right now from just dropping all kinds That's of cuss right. words right now. I know. That's why they give you the the our our uh, butt is covered test. Online. Did you take that one? Hell no. <laughs> oh, you didn't. No. Didn't. What do you think I do, middays? Get out. <laughs> hey, Cindy. Hey, Cindy, I got a I ham forgot. in my mouth. You want to take a bite out of it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a 
spite out of it. <laughs> if you get to introduce Eddie Money, I want you to try and stick your big hammy tongue in his mouth. <laughs> hey. Yummy. Hammy tongue. That's my new yeah. band. Sweet. Hammy tongue. I hope we don't uh, follow the same fate as... Your mom's camel, camel toe. I hope so, too. I, I had real hope for your mom's camel that's toe. That's hurtful. That's like Dan Halen. And we broke right up in a sound yeah, check yesterday. That's terrible. Mm, yeah. All right. Thank you, Cindy. All right. We'll talk to you later. See you later today. Bye. Bye. Big hammy tongue. <laughs> What's the matter? That's just icky. Check this out. Listener Bill in Sacktown had a couple of reasons his boss stunk, but listen to this one. This guy told me not to leave the one-second indicator on the microwave on. You know how you're waiting mm -hmm. for your coffee to heat up and you stop it before it counts right. down to zero? Right. Don't leave it on like that to make sure I let it rip down to nothing or else the same day or, or else someday the indicator would burn out. What? <laughs> someday the indicator would burn out because I kept leaving yeah. one second on the display and he would have to pay to have it fixed. What a cool oh God. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something Boyer would do. I'm surprised you don't subscribe. Uh, well, you know, David, that is true. The LED, David, <laughs> it's fried on that particular linear uh, aspect ratio. True, David. It's difficult for me to find uh, displays for my units. It was the first microwave ever made. It was a beta microwave. <laughs> I don't make these anymore. It's very difficult to find. What a beep blocker. David. <laughs> well, I mean, the, everything has a finite lifespan. David. David. And you keep pushing the switch, it's going to wear out. If you keep leaving mm -hmm. the thing on, it's going to burn out. David. Bye night. But he's a kook. David. At least the dinger <laughs> will have a, an extended lifetime because it will be not be used. Exactly. Karen, are you there? I'm here. Now, Interesting. as much as I thought that Karen, <laughs> uh, as much as I thought that Jamie had this thing won. She doesn't? Well, I don't know because, let me see here. Jamie, are you there? I'm here, yeah. Okay, let, remind everybody what happened. You had a, a pot had of... A a schizophrenic boss throw a pot of um, melted chocolate at my head. Mm. <laughs> and yet, as good as that is, Karen had something thrown at her as well. Uh-oh. So go ahead, Karen. Well, you know, her story sparked my memory. And um, I'm a nurse, and I was working in an operating room up in a little town in Wyoming. And we did a lot of orthopedic-type surgery, and... We, I went into the operating room one day, we were doing a knee surgery on someone, and we opened up all our instruments, and the surgeons always come in at the very end, and um, the surgeon came over and got all his, his stuff on and looked down at the tray of instruments, and he starts screaming because there was an instrument there that, that isn't the one that he usually uses, and... He picked the whole tray up of instruments and oh. threw it in my direction across mm. the room. Mm. And okay. Around, and instruments went everywhere, and we had to pick it all up. And mind you, the patient's on the table, um, ready to be operated on. Was the patient awake or knocked out by that time? The patient was knocked out. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> I would hate to be laying there, waiting for some of my guts to get rooted around in, and see yeah. the surgeon have a hissy fit and whip the tools onto the ground. Like about a half an hour at least for us to, to get another tray yeah. of instruments and get it all set up for him. And I actually left the room and um, yeah. told him, you know, I wasn't going to work that with him. We got a debate here. We got a real challenge. Mm -hmm. Both of these women had things thrown at her. There's Karen who had surgical instruments thrown, as she said, in her direction. Oh. Now, does that mean he was just mad and he whipped it and you happened to be in the area? Uh, no, I think he's aiming for me. Okay. Just, so Jamie? I jumped out of the way before the scalpel embedded me. Mm -hmm. but, you know, the instruments went everywhere. He was mad. Mm -hmm. He was he was pissed, and mm -hmm. they definitely came my direction. Jamie, so anything to back up your side of the story? Well, I think since I said the story no, first, and she didn't call in because she had remembered it, my story should win. Another reason, mm -hmm. another, another plus for Jamie? Karen, if you had been injured... You're in surgery. <laughs> but if you was, had been, you would already be under the doctor's care. Was one of the instruments a banjo? Oh, come on. It's a tie. She didn't get hit. Mm. Mm. And you didn't get hit. Yeah. That's the thing. Whereas Jamie actually got hit. She's and there's one more chocolate. thing. Mm -hmm. I hate to say it. This is really just not fair, but mm -hmm. life's not fair, Karen. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. one more thing that Jamie has going in her favor. She got What's the song. Come on. You got the song, Jamie. 
I mean, so that's the whole reason. Even if your and story I'm a isn't woo that girl. good. And you're a woo girl. But come on, it's all about the song. Listen, my friends, while I tell you about a girl that's so divine. I love her for the joy she's brought me. Come on. Oh, she's mine all mine. Oh, Jamie. <laughs> Talking about Jamie. Chocolate covered Jamie. Come on. Jamie, that's my love to you, Jamie. Yes, sir. You're the big winner. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> and she predicted her win. There's the woo. Awesome. She's a woo girl. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Dave Shelley and Shane saw the KGB. <laughs> its benefits. I saw Santana, I saw Aerosmith. We're restocking the shelves online so you can win more free stuff. All right. I can't wait to go to the zoo. Free concerts? Bring it on. Absolutely. I'd love to see the Padres. What are they playing? It's easy to join. Go to 101kgb.com. Keyword, blue chip. Then listen every day at 10 after the DSC. At 1. And at 5. Log on. Log, on. Log on. Tune in. Cash out. All right. From Saquon Resort and Casino and 101.5 KGB. So 
So, you know, there was quite a while there. And Nicole was saying that she didn't want her glasses anymore. Didn't want to deal with contact lenses. And mind you, there was no going without them. It wasn't an iffy situation. She needed those bad boys, but was tired of them. And we've all heard about the laser thing, but there was one problem. Huh? Big chicken. Oh. Great, big, screaming chicken. Hold on, kitten. I know the guy to talk to. Dr. David Shanslin, the UCSD Shiley Eye Center. Took her over there and he calmed her right down. Hooked her up. Now she's an eagle eye. Goes along with her eagle ears. And believe me, we're talking to a plastic surgeon about those. But... (laughs) 2020, no problem. Not for Dr. David Shanslin. 27 years in the business. 15,000 laser vision procedures on his resume. And if you are like Nicole and you are kind of freaked about the idea of someone working on your eyes, this is the guy to talk to. I'm telling you, everything that he said was going to happen happened, and it was easy peasy Japanesey. Dr. Shanslin, the UCSD Shiley Eye Center. Call him today, 877 921 Eyes. That's 877 921 Eyes. The website is Shiley. It's S-H-I-L-E-Y. ShileyLasik.com. Cool salads on a warm day. Ah, that's what trophies can do for you this summer. And when you add a cold beverage from Trophy's world-class bar, you are in lunchtime nirvana. The Salmon Caesar is a particular favorite. But then Trophy's has a vast selection of salads, as they do burgers and pizzas and cold beverages. Meet me at Trophy's for a cool salad and a ball game with burgers and fries. Hazard Center, Grossmont Center, across from UTC in downtown at 6th. K trophies. Good food for good sports. The Crossroads of the West Gun Show is back this weekend at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. We're finding everything we're looking for, so we're impressed. Awesome selection. Awesome, yeah, just a lot more than I expected to see. It's America's premier gun show with great deals on guns, ammo, scopes, accessories, and more. Some at wholesale prices, plus jewelry, gift ideas, and door prizes. If they don't have it here, they don't have it. Crossroads of the West Gun Show this weekend at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Sales are conducted in compliance with all federal, state, and local laws. For a discount coupon, go to 101KGB. When you have a broken appliance, you have two choices. Call the guy down the street, leave him a voicemail, and hope he calls you back and fixes your appliance, maybe. Or call the people you trust at 1-800-APPLIANCE. You'll get a knowledgeable person on the phone. They'll promptly schedule a service call to fix the problem right the first time. All repairs are guaranteed for one year on all parts and labor. Call 1-800-APPLIANCE. Appliance experts will rescue you. Call 1-800-APPLIANCE. In the 80s, it was their mission to hit you with their best shot. Now they're back for one night only at Harris Rincon, San Diego North. Grammy Award winner Pat Benatar and Neil Giraldo are coming to town Thursday, July 13th with special guest Berlin featuring Terry Nunn. Tickets start at $35 and they won't last long. So order them now for a night with the invincible Pat Benatar and Neil Giraldo. For tickets and showtimes, visit TicketWeb.com or call 866-468-3399. Or call 1-800-HARRIS to find out about our package deal for two tickets and deluxe hotel accommodations. It's Pat Benatar and Neil Giraldo live in concert July 13th at 8 p.m. Only at Harris Rincon Casino and Resort where you get Las Vegas action San Diego style. Must be 21 years of age or older to attend concert or gamble. No one to stop before you start. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. Owned by the Rincon San Luis Ano Band of Mission Indians. Managed by HCAL Corporation. The giant Pearson Ford just made a special purchase direct from the Ford Motor Company. Gary, tell me more. Well, Tom, these vehicles are arriving right now and daily for the next several days. 2006 V6 Fusion SE, the one with the sport package and dual exhaust. Gary, this is the one that has the APA highway estimate of 29 miles per gallon? That's right. The personal safety system and side airbags included. Six CD MP3, six speaker deluxe sound system. Power windows, power locks, a telescopic steering wheel, Cruise and audio control on the steering wheel, remote keyless and passive anti-theft system built into the key. These are loaded, Gary. I mean, at this, it sounds like a probably, what, four dollars $450 a month? You would think so, but right now, a Pearson Ford pick yours up for just two sixty nine dollars a month plus tax. Wait, what's the out-of-pocket on this, Gary? How about zero out of your pocket? You just signed over the $1,000 factory rebate as your drive-off. Nothing out of pocket. Two sixty nine dollars a month for this beautiful vehicle. No security deposit, $0.15 cents per mile in excess of 31500 miles. Over 20 in stock right now. You've got to be over to the Giant. Pearson Ford. Fair amount of alcohol. Unproof credit. Sale on 721. 
Summer 9 to 5 rolls on again today. That is where we are rolling out tickets, usually four at a time. Cool things. We do that every day between 9 and 5 here on the KGB. We give that to you just for listening. Today, it's a four-pack zoo tickets, and we'll throw in some tickets for Eddie Muddy at Humphreys. I believe that show is tomorrow. It says here that the show is tonight, but I believe that's tomorrow. Humphreys Concerts by the Bay. That's a bonus just for listening at work. Summer 9 to 5 today here on the KGB. <sighs> Did he forget he knew how to throw a changeup? <sighs> I think he Did just he forget I, his go to pitch. I, I, I think he was thinking that, 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 that Young was expecting the changeup and can't hit I, it anyway. That I, well, I f- figured it'd, it'd go for a ball. You know, it'd probably Young would lay off on it and it'd be ball one. Two outs, or two whatever. strikes. Let's throw him a fastball. Sure. <sighs> Sparks with a chainsaw here on KGB. It could have been ball two, three. I don't know. Mm. Trying to forget. Hello again, everybody. In the sports world. In the Major League All-Star game last night in Pittsburgh, the National League had a 2-1 to one lead with the Padres' Trevor Hoffman in for the save in the ninth inning. Two outs, two runners on, two strikes on Texas Rangers shortstop Michael Young. World Series home field advantage on the line. Here's the windup. The pitch swung on and lined into right center, a base hit. Oh, no. And this ball will get to the wall. Oh, no. And two runs will score. Ah! Young around second, heading for third. The relay to third, not in time. A two-run triple by Michael Young with the American League down to its final strike. And they have taken a 3-2 to two lead here in the top of the ninth. Oh, shut up. Uh, Dan Schulman with the call. The Yankees' Mariana Rivera then saved it for the American League, which has secured home field advantage in the World Series thanks to last night's victory. The first-place Padres resume action Friday night at Petco Park against the Atlanta Braves. And now, a story of self-discovery. A story of a man who broke out of his norm to experience something new. To experience the joy of Major League Baseball. Show killer Chris Boyer, who is not a baseball fan, not a baseball fan, tried to watch the All-Star game last night, but alas, turned it off once he saw that none of the players were headbutting each other or calling each other the son of a terrorist whore. But Boyer did honor the All-Star game by injecting his new forklift with a syringe full of human growth hormone. Oh. And maybe it's a good thing Boyer did not watch the All-Star game, Shelley, because I know for a fact that he becomes visibly aroused each time he hears the name Alfonso Soriano. Sure. Don't look at him, Shelley. For the love of God, avert, avert, avert your eyes. Okay. Chris Boyer, ladies and gentlemen. Just another example of the triumph of the human spirit. It's true. Ah, people say this country is in trouble. And no, it's not. And speaking of odd proclivities... The movie American Pie was apparently based on a true story. According to a recent survey, 6% of Americans, 6% Mm -hmm. have admitted to having sex with a fruit. (laughs) And 10% have had sex with a vegetable. Here's my question. Is the avocado a fruit or a vegetable? I'm asking for a friend. Anybody know? Anybody? Anybody? 570 Same thing with that tomato. I'd like yeah. to know. Yeah. I'd like to know. Tomato. You know, yeah. Another big sports. pit in the middle of it. Oh, you know, personal experience, huh? Talk about sea blocking. First Holy land. <laughs> wow. First land. Uh, suddenly, I don't want guacamole anymore. Thank you, David. 8.42, 19 seconds. This is your 101.5 KGB Sports Network. Oh, my. Who put sour cream in the avocado dip? David. <laughs> you double dipped. Chainsaw brought to you by B&D Auto. Awarded for their high ethical standards by the BBB, serving all makes, models, maintenance to major repairs, two locations in Vista. Call 760-631-AUTO. In Rancho Bernardo, it's 858-675-CARS. Yeah, my truck doesn't have coverage, but if my boat hit it, will my boat policy pay for the damage to my truck? 
That's a real question that was put to the licensed insurance experts at Progressive Direct. When you call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE, we'll answer your questions and help you find the policy that best fits you. So whether your question's unique or typical... Will I get a discount if I insure both my cars with you? In fact, you will. Call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. Progressive Direct Insurance Company and its affiliates, Mayfield Village, Ohio. Available in most states and situations. Rules? When you build a landmark for living like no other, there are no rules. No preconceived notions about form-following function or trendy architectural fads of the day. Instead, you choose innovation over imitation. You find a remarkable site at Kettner and Grape in historic Little Italy. Then you aim for the stars. The result takes your breath away. With elegant penthouses, a sail tower facing the harbor, towns, and chic cargo lofts. Fifteen-story bay and city views so beautiful... They defy description. Some called it impossible. We call it Pier. Heart of San Diego and soul of Little Italy. Pier honors the neighborhood's maritime heritage and those who will live here. Register at PierLittleItaly.com. PierLittleItaly.com. And be a part of it. Because downtown has many neighborhoods. But only one place to live. Pier. Three million people are on the go in San Diego, and most of them go in their cars. You probably noticed that at rush hour. Because of this, San Diego has an intense need for roads and freeways that move. Local home builders are doing their part to ease your commutes by building or paying for new roads all the time. They just invested another $800 million as part of Transnet funding. You can see that list of roads at biasandiego.org. Home builders are good neighbors who invest in your community. A message from the San Diego Building Industry Association. Hello? Dad, it's me, Mark. Listen, I'm stuck in Mexico. You need to come get me. Honey, it's Mark. He's down at the Rubio's again eating those carnitas tacos. He's being a wiseacre again. Dad, I'm not at Rubio's. Mark, I know Rubio's is just like Baja, like you're always saying. And I know about the $1.49 carnitas taco deal. You have fun, Mark. Wait, Dad! For a limited time, get the real taste of Baja real easy. Rubio's Carnitas Tacos are just $1.49. Driving way out of your way to find cheaper gas? Using the elevator at the gym? Have you done something lately that actually makes sense? Introducing Kearney Mesa Subaru, San Diego's exclusive Subaru destination. Great styles, fuel efficiency, all-wheel drive, safety, exceptional service, convenient location, sensible deals. Kearney Mesa Subaru, it just makes sense. Right now, lease an 06 Subaru B9 Tribeca SUV for only $239 a month, plus tax for 36 months. That's $239 a month for a brand new 06 B9 Tribeca. This month at Kearney Mesa Subaru. Check us out at KearneyMesaSubaru.com. Conveniently located on Convoy Street between the 163 and 805. Kearney Mesa Subaru. It just makes sense. Lease on approved above average credit. $54.99 plus tax on license total drive off. Includes $34.99 customer cash and $2,000 factory rebate. Zero security deposit. 12,000 miles per year. 15 cents per access mile. VIN number 429827. One at this payment expires 73106. It's Padres Talk with host Mike Piazza. Our guests today are Brian Giles and Mike Cameron. Two aggressive outfielders. Aggressive is right. That's why I brought some new safety equipment. You think we need these? Here's where you can catch these guys in action. Nice helmets, guys. Be sure to catch Brian, Mike, and your Padres when they take on the Atlanta Braves Friday, July 14th at 7.05. All fans will receive a Padres duffel bag presented by Wealth Resorts. On Saturday, July 15th, come early for the Park in the Park concert presented by Bud True Music and brought to you by Fox 6. Then see your Padres battle the Braves at 7.05. On Sunday, July 16th, it's baseball under the sun when the Padres and Braves collide at 1.05. All kids 14 and younger will receive a Padres kite presented by Submarina. Get your tickets now at Padres.com. 1877 Friar Ticks, the advanced ticket windows at Petco Park or at any San Diego area Petco store. Don't miss your Padres and the Atlanta Braves, July 14th, 15th, and 16th. Now, back to Padres Talk. That last donut's mine. <laughs> These might work. Padres Baseball on a mission. Remember how good the fruits of summer can be? Vons does. So, to make sure theirs is fresh, ripe, and delicious, they inspect it five times from the field to the store. At Vons, the fruit isn't just picked, it's chosen. Vons, ingredients for life. Two bills that really stand out as being, God, I wish I didn't have those. Credit card debt and the mortgage. Yep. Okay, I can't do anything about your mortgage. We can lower it for you. Would that be all right? Hey, how about that? Call my friends at Park Place Funding, 866-491-FUND. They'll come to your home whenever it's convenient for you. Take a look at the equity that you have earned in your home, and they'll put that equity to work for you. 
And what that means is they'll get rid of your credit card debt and lower your mortgage. Your two worst bills. One's gone, the other one's a lot lower than it used to be. Park Place Funding, 866-491-FUND. Here's the guy who shot at the Heidi Klum, huh? <laughs> Mark Sanchez. Hey, Dave. Traffic report brought to you by the Sleep Train Mattress Centers. In the Inland Valley, the Inland Corridor, South 15, still struggling in Escondido before the 78 down toward Lake Hodges. And then basically just connecting the dots here from Rancho Bernardo down toward Ted Williams Parkway, the scene of an earlier accident, now out of lanes, but it's still struggling down through Poway. More traffic further as you approach the 8 Freeway in Murphy Canyon. It looks like the coastline still struggles from La Costa down toward Manchester Avenue. More traffic down ahead uh, as you approach uh, Del Mar. On the west side of the 56, there was a stalled out car in the right lane out by Carmel Creek. That's why it's slow. Westbound 56 approaching Carmel Creek. Out of the South Bay, northbound 805 still struggling a little bit through National City. And again, the heavier stuff is up in Kearney Mesa right before the 163 transition as you head up past the 52 up toward Governor Drive now. Out of the east, the 8's fantastic in La Mesa, but you will slow down approaching the 15 and then the last portion, Hotel Circle out to the 5. There's a fender bend on the right shoulder. He made Heidi Klum want to take the L out of her last name. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What, what, does that mean it's Heidi Klum? <laughs> what do you mean, Heidi Klum? I don't get it. Hey. That's it. Whoa. Is that a little loud? Uh, huh? Just a little. Oh. I mean, you can feel the... Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mark Sanchez with Dave Shelley and Chainsaw on the 101.5 KTV. Who is that guy? Huh? Who is that guy? Huh? 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 I don't know. I'd like to see him. <laughs> show him to I'll me. show it to you. Shelly and I are getting dangerously close to the half-baked crackpot news time. What mm. will be our headlines this morning? Uh, well, you know, that horrible eight bombs simultaneously in uh, India, and they're still digging through that. And uh, some bad stuff in Baghdad, and uh, then some better stuff when we start talking about celebrities. Do you have the crack that they found on the governor's daughter? No. <laughs> Governor Schwartz's daughter? These are the year's best Actual headlines. Uh huh. Crack found on governor's daughter. <laughs> and aren't we all Was delighted? She born yes. with it? I don't know. No, wow. I thought y'all came with some That's of those. That's right. Experts say something went wrong in jet crash. Really? <laughs> <laughs> These are actual, actual headlines printed in newspapers. Right. Police, police begin campaign to run down jaywalkers. Now, th that is <laughs> stiff. <laughs> That's a punishment. Tough penalty. Yeah. One of my favorites. Is there a ring of debris around Uranus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should take care of that if there is. <laughs> Panda mating fails. Veterinarian takes over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is dedication to the job. I was the best damn veterinarian they had. <laughs> Uh, Miners refuse to work after death. <laughs> nice. Uh, Selfish. Juvenile court to try shooting defendant. See, <laughs> what they mean is... Uh -huh. This headline appeared in 2005. War dims hope for peace. <laughs> you know, that's almost always true. I agree. If strike isn't settled quickly, it may last a while. Oh, no. Do you think? Cold wave linked to temperature. <laughs> uh, man struck by lightning faces battery charge. <laughs> How's this possible that they get... I, you mean, I do you know. think they're goofing or are they stupid? Which one is it? Probably a little of both. Mm -hmm. They probably slip some through when they're just, you know, punchy and tired. And then sometimes I bet they just don't even look at it. Typhoon rips through cemetery. Want to guess? No survivors? Hundreds dead. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The half-baked crackpot news and some celebrity gossip is coming up in 60 seconds here on the KGB. You know, I've had company in town, and we've been uh, kind of bopping around town, checking things out. And I discovered a new hard rock condo hotel in San Diego. This is really cool. And talk about location. It's across from the convention center, across from Petco, and it's the gateway to the gas lamp. Now, here's the deal with these condos at the hard rock. 
This is real estate. Now, they're building a 420-suite luxury hotel. Every one of the suites has been custom, condominiumized for sale. 300 already spoken for, 120 remain. And the cool thing is when you use the suite, there are no charges for the cleaning or the services. Uh, Abramowitz has just informed me that uh, Days Free Thursday Golf tomorrow will be sited at Aviara, oh. adjacent to the Four Seasons Hotel. Lucky, lucky, lucky. If you would like to go with us, you will not be required to pay anything. That would be the free part mm -hmm. of Dave's free Thursday golf. It is brought to you by our friends at Aldala, who, despite my confusion about Abramowitz, it's right. Aldala who has the hottest shaft in golf. In fact, Aldala gave me a new uh, golf club to try for tomorrow. You like it? Very excited about this. I haven't hit it yet. Ooh. I hope I can hit it. Brand new. Oh, yeah, it's brand new. And uh, uh, Aldala uh, can be found on the web at Aldala.com. If you would like to go golfing with us for free and not pay anything, we'll pick up the tab for you. Go to 101kgb.com, click on the free Thursday golf link, and fill out that form, send it in, and see if you get the phone call. Sweet. You're going to have a great time. Here's why I wish I was a hot chick. I've always said I wish I would, you know, if you can re you, know, you ask people, what are you going to reincarnate yourself? I'm going to come back as a red robin. Well, you're stupid. <laughs> Butterfly. Oh my god, I love butterflies. <laughs> you know that? What if I came back as a butterfly on the ocean? Sweet. Oh my Ooh. god. Ugh. All right, so I've always said you come back as a hot chick. There is no more pampered creature on earth than the hot chick. Sure. Jessica Simpson is the cover girl in the new issue of OK magazine. This is the magazine that was supposed to blow people out of business, right. and I I've never even really seen it. Comes out today. Last August, they paid her $200,000 to appear on the cover six times in the next two years. Part of the deal, Jessica doesn't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have to talk about anything. Mm -hmm. They just want to be able to put her picture on the cover of the magazine. Sweet. $200,000 for pictures that already exist right. that she didn't have to pose right. for. <laughs> That's pampered hot chickness. Sure is. Sweet. More on her. Her new movie comes out uh, later this summer. So uh, next month, she'll be the co-host of the Teen Choice 2006 Awards. And it's not known who the other host is. They haven't named him yet. It could be the co-star of her movie, Dane Cook. That is the guy whose trailer she spent so much time in. Oh. His girlfriend actually broke up with him. Uh-oh. That will cause a rift in your relationship. Sure. You're hanging out when with you're, Jessica. When you're uh, playing house with Jessica Simpson. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, your chicks are so nitpicky. Yeah, needy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoever it is, hopefully they can read a teleprompter. A source on the movie said we dread it when she had a scene with a lot of dialogue. Sometimes it would take all day. Of course, Jessica claims she's not the airhead that she played in Newlyweds. Sure. All those lines were written for her. Uh -huh. Like three years ago when she turned 23, she said 23 is old. It's almost 25. <laughs> <laughs> and that's almost... Wait, listen, I'm not done. Oh, no. I'm not done. Okay. She said... Oh, 23 is old. It's almost 25, and that's almost my mid-20s. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. She might have to repeat a year. She might not be smart enough to make it to 24. Mm. Uh, the gossip magazines have two new anorexics to write about. Oh, no. And they couldn't be happier. One of them is Kate Bosworth. The other is Kira Knightley. The two big movies, mm -hmm. Superman and Pirates of the Caribbean. Yep. Kira Knightley does look anorexic. She's very tiny. Not in the movie, mm -hmm. but when you see her at the um, premieres, the pictures of her at the premieres. Right. Oh, girl, get yep. some fudge. <laughs> They're both featured on Us Weekly. Uh, magazine says, finally, there's someone besides Nicole Richie. The new issue is going to come out on Friday, and there's a nice little con job on the cover. Up at the top, there's a picture of Katie Holmes with a big headline that says, Katie Speaks, Surrey's Doing Great. Now, they didn't really get an interview with Katie Holmes. They took a picture of her on vacation in mm -hmm. Telluride. Yeah. She was walking down the street with a friend, and uh, Tom Cruise is nowhere in sight. Neither was the baby. But a few people who lived there claimed that they saw the baby. Do you know that people are claiming the baby doesn't exist? Really? I've heard that, yeah. Demanding copies of the birth certificate and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Really? It's oh weird. My God. It's like the birth certificate was signed by some guy in Sweden, and there's no real legitimate doctor. Or the uh, witness can't be found. There's all sorts of scandal. Yeah. There's... There's something going on there with it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. After she left, the clerk described Suri as being funny looking. <laughs> and oh, no. couldn't that be the most reason? Maybe. Gordon with a bonnet. Maybe. Cooped yeah. up head. Yeah. 
Think about being Tom Cruise, the most famous movie star on earth, and you got a cooked up baby. Well, you get, you know, look, old salamander eyes, and what do you think she's going to produce? Meanwhile, the most disturbing part of the article is the speculation that Katie might be pregnant again. Oh, God. Oh, come on. What's the matter? Well, get off the baster. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Boyer. Make a turkey already. <laughs> right. Save it for Thanksgiving. Now, more on Kira Knightley. In London, the newspapers are calling her the British Britney Spears. Oh, no. Believe it or not, even in the winter, she walks around barefoot. Mm. Now, this is a big city. The streets are filthy. Mm -hmm. The bottom of her feet are caked with grime, and they got a picture of it, and it's not oh, pretty. No. You know, she's a pretty girl, and we don't like it when pretty girls gross themselves up. Yeah. She says, I never know what shoes go with what outfit. Barefoot goes with everything. Uh-uh. No. Get a stylist. Everyone else has them. She loves doing the Pirates movie. She says, it's only time I have any cleavage. They paint it in with a special airbrush. Yeah, I'll bet they do, because mm -hmm. that girl is really skinny, flat skinny. Not what she appears to be in the movies right. at all. Uh, interview last weekend, Paris Hilton. Are we still into Paris Hilton? Yes, totally. Many people are. Totally. <laughs> Very much into it. Many people have been. <laughs> right, and will be. Yeah. All right. She, uh, we broke the news to you this week here on the Crackpot News Team did, that she is going to go without sex for an entire year. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because she gets so involved with a man that she just loses the Parisness of Paris when she's with a man. It takes too much of her energy. Mm -hmm. Now, no one believed her. Because, you know, Paris can't last a weekend without getting boned. Yeah. Sure enough, Tuesday night, she was back in the game. She and her ex-boyfriend, Stavros, were openly affectionate at the Trendy Club hype. Everybody ran the story about her staying celibate, so now she has to sneak around. And when it was time to leave, she left via the front door. He exited through the rear. Mm-hmm. Oh, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> you know she's going to pull that move. Something yeah. like that. That yeah. doesn't count. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a that doesn't count. Uh, Nicole's cousin. Oh, she's going to love this. Oh, here we go. Nicole's cousin. Uh, she's made this habit. They've they've kind of made this tradition mm -hmm. that they uh, hook up on Sunday right. in the backyard, just kind of hang out, right. go swimming, hang out by the pool. Yeah. They're very tight. You know, they enjoy each other's company all the time. Like sisters, yeah. Yes, exactly. They are very much like sisters. Right. And, uh, and the reason that she has these Sundays to spend with us is because she's newly single. Ah. And I never really understood this whole thing, single. I thought single meant you're either married or you're not. But apparently single means you've got a boyfriend or a girlfriend, whatever. Okay. Right, so anyway, okay. she's newly, completely unattached. And I looked at her and I said, yeah, that'll last. You know, enjoy this Sunday while you've got it because it's not going to last. Yeah. I said, you know, I, was, I don't know, being a jerk or something. Hard to believe. Total. <laughs> and she got in my face about it. And I really? said, I said, bet me a hundred bucks. Yeah. Before this summer is over, you will cancel on one of your Sunday hangs with Nicole because of a guy. Uh, That's what I said. Okay. That's what I said. Right. I said, you'll cancel on a Sunday because of a guy. hundred bucks. And she came, you know, she hopped right up, stomped over in her bikini, shook my hand. hundred dollars, hundred dollars, right like that. Didn't qualify it or anything like right. that. Just bet me. Right. She got all fired up. Next Sunday. What uh -huh. happened? Didn't show up. Uh-oh. Uh, hooked up with her ex-boyfriend. Uh. Uh. That doesn't count. Yes, it does. <laughs> Where's yes, my money? It does. Where's my money? No kidding. Claims it doesn't count. Of course it counts. Of, you're Such damn right it counts. Ass. You said because of a guy. Hey, Jordy, I want my money. Hundred dollars, girl. Small and marked bills. No change. No, I want a franc. Oh, gee, okay. Don't blame you. Crispy. Uh, ten years of marriage, it's all over for Christy Brinkley and her Aww. fourth husband. Mm-hmm. She's a four time loser. Hmm. Starting to think there's something wrong there. They got an eight year old daughter and she went through one of those weird periods where she couldn't come up with a regular name, so now she's stuck with a kid named Sailor. Oh jeez. Sorry if your name's Sailor. <laughs> <laughs> And she's got two other kids from B uh, Billy Joel. Yeah. Luckily, she got out in time before she got into one of many his auto wrecks. Ugh, no kidding. Christy is 52. God, she looks great, I though. I think I'd some of that. Yeah, she doesn't look a day over 51. <laughs> you can still see her in the middle of the night hawking total gym uh, stuff with Chuck Norris. He doesn't look as good as her. No. It's impossible to believe that she is a mother of three, a mother of three in her 50s. 
People say there's obviously been some surgery, but her doctor should get some sort of award because she is still breathtakingly beautiful. She's really pretty. She's gorgeous. She's so pretty. I wonder if where she lives, the stars are still red at night. Well, if it's in that hotel with Chevy Chase, I bet they are. Hillary Swank is the cover girl this month in Vanity Fair. And she was fairly cruel to her soon-to-be ex-husband, Chad Lowe. Oh, no. There was no need for her to bring up the topic of his substance abuse, was there? No, but what, what was he abusing? Poor guy's been clean for three years, but uh -huh. the interview was so boring, the magazine had no choice but to use that as the hook to sell it. So now, instead of being congratulated on staying clean, the whole world thinks he's some kind of junkie. Thanks, Hillary. Conan O'Brien was talking about how historians have discovered new evidence that Albert Einstein cheated on his wife with dozens of women. You talked about this yesterday. Yes, we did. And Conan said his wife never suspected a thing, and Albert said, <laughs> she's no Einstein. Come on. <laughs> Blam and Kablooey. Those are your that. headlines. Yep. Coming up next year, Shelly Dunn with the Half-Baked Crackpot News. The summer of 9 to 5 and a brand new installment of the bit you can't unhear. <laughs> Jokes gone wild. We're going to roll a new one for you today. Good stuff coming up here. KGB and Q103. This is San Diego County Mercedes-Benz Summer Event Radio. Take one. You know, we pretty much invented cruising in Southern California. I mean, we have the winding roads, the awesome weather. It's pretty much a state law out here. So why not cruise to your San Diego County Mercedes-Benz dealer during the summer event and check out the great lease and finance offers on the perfect summer cruising machine, the 2006 SLK 280. Picture it. The retractable hardtop roof is down, the nine-speaker sound system is up, and you are driving down the road in that sleek, sexy Benz you've always dreamed about. It's really quite an image. I'm getting tingly just talking about it. So cruise on down right now for a great offer on the SLK 280 and select 2006 C, E, and M class models. Actually, the summer event's only till July 31st, so don't cruise. You'd better step on it. Nice. That was San Diego County Mercedes-Benz. Around here, you have to love what you drive. Available only to qualified customers exclusively through Mercedes-Benz Financial at participating dealers. Special finance and lease offers available now at your San Diego Mercedes-Benz dealer. Drive your new Benz home today or see them online at www.socalmb.com The most wonderful sleep known to man is REM sleep or as you may know it, dreaming It's where your unconscious gets a workout your day gets resolved and your fantasy life gets a real shot and if you have back pain buckle your seatbelt in a big time study, 93% reported back pain relief when sleeping on a sleep number bed compared to inner spring mattresses. Adjust the firmness and you'll toss and turn less and dream and sleep more. So get a sleep number, shut the lights off, and let the REM start cranking. Then, when someone says you live in a dream world, you say, oh yeah, ain't it grand? Where will your sleep number take you tonight? Find it at your local select comfort store. Queen set starting under $1,000 at UTC, Plaza Camino Real, North County Fair, and Parkway Plaza. Hey, if you're looking to buy a home in North County, you've got to check out San Alijo Hills for yourself. The family atmosphere and community is incredible with its own town square and amenities. Check out SanAlijoHills.com or call 888-SANALIHO. Last week, I shattered my little brother's video game in 2,000 pieces. Some folks don't handle competition well. Really, it's his fault. If he hadn't been a jerk, I wouldn't have had to. At Time Warner Cable, we brought competition to home phone service, and it's made the phone company a little upset. Like the time he said, in your face, after beating me at foosball, I threw away all the balls. With digital phone, you get unlimited local calling and free long distance for as low as $39.95 a month with all the calling features you love included. There are no surprise fees like the phone company charges, and of course, you get enhanced 911. My mom tells me I should be a better sport. Honestly, we really don't blame the phone company for being frustrated. After all, a million people have already switched to digital phone. I just can't help getting mad, you know? I hate losing. The phone company doesn't seem to like competition, but you're going to love it. Call 1-800-872-0351 today. $39.95 price is valid when you combine digital phone with other qualifying services. Some restrictions apply. Call for details. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is AJ. Looking at what's up in your world. 
Now, Derek's been telling us about his great summer. I just finished a cross-country road trip. My high-speed internet from AT&T made it really simple. Downloaded the right maps, found great motel rates, even uploaded pictures on my website. Derek, hope you weren't driving too fast. <laughs> well, not as fast as my high-speed internet. <laughs> Ooh, Derek's got jokes. High-speed internet from AT&T. Now for just $12.99 a month for 12 months when you order online. It's the speed you need to get the most out of your summer. Want to get three months of high-speed internet free? Switch from your old cable company to the new AT&T. Visit att.com slash one to order now. The new AT&T. Your world delivered. For new customers only, 12-month term. Taxes, other charges, and Federal Universal Service Cost Recovery Fee Extra. For details of additional charges, restrictions, and requirements, call 1-866-416-6471 toll-free or visit att.com slash offer details. Not available in all areas. If you're going to Internet date, I think you have to be a little careful. I learned the hard way. I had an online romance with Surferboy284 for seven weeks. We shared our innermost thoughts, our fantasies, you name it. We were so nervous to meet, so we just kept putting it off. 342 emails later, we decided to meet at a sushi restaurant in West L.A. I walked in, looked around, and then I saw him sitting alone. The thing about a good story, especially a life story, you want it to keep going. Drive the safest car you can. Volvo for life. As part of Volvo's year-end sales event, lease a new S40 for 264 a month for 36 months. 2658 to its signing. 15 cents a mile over 10,500 miles a year. Taxes, title, and registration fees extra. Call 877-24-VOLVO for details. Visit your San Diego County Volvo retailer before this lease offer ends. Speaking of endings, hear the rest of the story at GoVolvoDealers.com. Thank you very much. Our top story today, two Kashmiri militant groups are denying playing any role in the bombings that ripped through Bombay's commuter trains, killing 200 people and wounding hundreds. I read as much as 700 were wounded. Indian investigators reportedly suspect two terror groups so that are allied with al-Qaeda. Some Bombay residents have been riding city trains today, but there hasn't been the usual crush of, uh, crush of passengers, as you can well imagine. Eight bombs went off on packed trains. Police are still picking through the wreckage for clues. Pakistan, India's rival over disputed territory of Kashmir, quickly condemned yesterday's bombings. Even so, India alleges that Pakistan supports the Muslim militants. President Bush is commenting on yesterday's terrorist attacks in India. More from Fox News Radio's Rich Johnson in Germany. He's a Richard and he's yes, Johnson. He is. Huh? <laughs> he's Dick Johnson. He's Poe. It's redundant. Huh? Before leaving Washington for his visits to Germany and the G8 summit in Russia, the president said he and the first lady send their deepest condolences to the friends and family of what he calls the brutal attacks on commuter rail passengers in Mumbai. In a written statement, he says the U.S. stands with the people and government of India and condemns in the strongest terms these atrocities committed against innocent people. In Rostock, Germany, Rich Johnson, Fox News Radio. Let's go to India now with Fox News Radio's Amy Kellogg with more on the story. I am told that some people in a moment of panic yesterday jumped off moving trains only to then be run over on these tracks by oncoming trains. The bombs were made of a substance called RDX and remotely detonated. Also that they were packed 
with nails and screws. Yeah. You know, when this happens, you have the world leaders, they get together and they all make a public comment about how they strongly condemn right. these actions. Well, ah, no right. kidding. What does that have to do with anything? We didn't think you applauded it. We didn't think you, you know. Exactly. Were you going to take credit for it? I never right. understood why they do that. I, I, does I, it make them look bad if they don't I run out so. and do the whole yeah. public sympathy card? you got to kind of hand ring, I guess, to be politically involved and on their side, I, I suppose. Guess. I don't know. Stupid. Moving on to Baghdad, all but four of two dozen people kidnapped by gunmen from a bus station have been killed. Gunmen attacked the bus station today in a volatile town about 16 miles northeast of Baghdad. In the capital, a suicide bomber blew himself up in a restaurant in the capital. That killed eight people and wounded 30. In the bus station attack, the gunman drove up in several cars and just kidnapped 24 people. Police say 20 bodies were found, and another Iraqi official says the victims were Shiites. Uh, four people, though, luckily were rescued. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld says it's still too soon to talk about when the U.S. might begin to significantly cut its troop strength in Iraq. He made a surprise appearance to an Iraqi air base saying Iraqi officials are not yet ready to make key security decisions. On another matter, Rummy rejects Iraq's request for Iraqi courts to handle the prosecution of American troops who are accused of crimes against Iraqis. He says incidents like the alleged rape murder of an Iraqi girl hurt American troops as much as anybody else. Rummy does also say the terrorists and the threat of domestic terror have not and will not intimidate the American people. Rummy addressing the troops in Iraq on a surprise visit. The American people have got a darn good center of gravity, a, an inner gyroscope. They can get blown off kilters from time to time, but by golly, it centers again. Uh, we wouldn't be the country we are today if the American people didn't have a good center of gravity. Thank you, sir. And some American soldiers who've been training Iraqi soldiers are now headed back to the States. Jim Craig now reporting. It'll take five weeks to bring all the 720 soldiers of the 80th Division home. After the out process at Camp Atterbury, they'll be back home with their families and their loved ones. Sergeant Tara Jackson. Most of the 80th soldiers come from Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. No. Two members of the 80th were killed in Iraq. No. Jim Craig. Richmond, Virginia. He was a hockey player on the <laughs> Olympic team in the That is correct. I love the captain That's of the great. team. His flag uh, draped right over his, his shoulders. shoulders mm -hmm. as he looked for his father in the stands. God, you do me better than I do. <laughs> Never heard it? Soon it'll just be Dave doing all the puppets. We'll be at home sleeping. It'll be great. <laughs> Sleep in. Make Dave do it all. That's right. Blah, blah. I Yay. like statistics. Exactly. Hey, David, hey, David. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Department of Homeland Security is at odds with its own inspector general about a huge database that helps determine where the anti-terrorism money goes. The IG has issued a report about the said database, which was compiled from suggestions and requests from individual states. ABC News national correspondent Jim Hickey now explains. The inspector general's yes. report is critical of the asset database for having <laughs> poor data being inconsistent and full of too many non-critical resources like ice cream parlors and local festivals. The report says it makes allocating anti-terrorism funds more challenging. But Homeland Security says the report misses the point of the database. It is not a list of critical assets, says Homeland, but a repository for analyzing what could be at risk for a terrorist attack. Jim Hickey, ABC News. I gave her a hickey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, repository. Yeah. She makes an excellent repository, David. <laughs> Well, President Bush decided to leave Washington today. He's headed off to the GH Summit in Petersburg, Russia. ABC's senior national correspondent Claire Shipman interviewed former Soviet President Gorbachev, who helped end the Cold War. He spoke with Shipman in St. Petersburg, Russia, through an interpreter. The former Soviet leader had a warning for his Western friends about recent attacks on the state of democracy in Russia. We have made some mistakes. So what? Please don't put even more obstacles in our way. Do you really think you are smarter than we are? Questions about whether Russia is off course in its quest for democracy he accuses Americans of arrogance. Hmm. Meanwhile, Russia's leader, Vladimir Putin, has a caustic response to Vice President Cheney's recent suggestions about democratic backsliding in the country of Russia. So he called Cheney's comments, quote... Yes! Oh, yeah. And uh, he called, his voice is gone. And when he gets mad, his he's voice very goes upset. way up. He like really a little is. Girl. Mm -hmm. He called Cheney's comments an unsuccessful hunting shot, of course, underscoring oh, recent tensions oh, between the U.S. Oh, and Russia. Oh, oh, that ouch. remark referring to the shotgun oh, class ow. by our vice president during a hunting trip that oh, accidentally yes. wounded his friend. Snap! He should have said that. Yeah. That's what he should have. He should have finished talk with. Talk to the hand. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a bad hunting shot. <laughs> <laughs> Snap, comrade. Cut you. 
Meanwhile, the first stop is in Rostock, Germany, for a social call to the German Chancellor. That's where ABC's Anne Compton is. Stepping into the past, yes. President Bush will be the guest here along the Baltic Sea in an historic town built centuries before Christopher Columbus made it to the New World. Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel grew up here. The president really likes her politics. So this is a little like being asked down to the Crawford Ranch for the weekend. Only in and Germany. Compton, ABC News, Rostock, Germany. Oh, and please, please give us one more. Germany's new chancellor grew Thank up you. here in East Germany, and she is bringing President Bush to a quaint small town where the church and the town call. hall date back to the year 1270. <laughs> I had to take Laura. He's going to a barbecue where the White House has been told the local chef personally went hunting for the wild boar for dinner. Mm. Stuart Holliday, former U.S. ambassador to the U.N. for special political affairs, says leaders at the G8 summit are expected to discuss the most urgent issues at the moment, and that will likely include the problems with countries developing nuclear capabilities. See, that's the difference between our countries. You come to the White House, you're going to get treated like a king. You sleep mm -hmm. in the Lincoln bedroom. There's butlers. There's, uh, you know, maids. You're every need. And it's a gourmet 18-course dinner by right. the nation's greatest chef. You go to Germany, and eh, we found a pig rooting around the back. <laughs> Shot him. Shot that. Put an apple in his mouth. Yeah, stuck Here. him over the fire for a little Here's bit. Here's a fork. One Go second. Ahead. Yeah. yeah. This annual summit ha usually has a theme. In this case, it's energy security. But on the president's mind, it's going to be uh, it's going to be Iran and North Korea. Uh, in other news today, investigators are searching for the cause of a derailment and fire on a Chicago commuter train. It was filled with rush hour commuters yesterday. Fire filled the subway tunnel with smoke. It forced commuters to evacuate. At least two people critically injured. Uh, terrorism, though, not suspected. And then Monday night, there was a deadly collapse of concrete ceiling panels in a Boston highway tunnel. Uh, one lady died. It sparked more doubts about Boston's Big Dig project. An investigation into the collapse is underway, and Massachusetts Attorney General says negligent homicide charges might be filed. Got a break. We'll bring you round two of the Half Baked Crackpot News after this brief timeout. Stay tuned, summer of 9 to 5. It's a, a bonus 9 to 5 today. Not only do you get the zoo tickets, but we're throwing in some Eddie Money tickets as well. Chainsaw Sports and a brand new edition of Jokes Gone Wild. Caution, you can't unhear it. Oh. Coming up here on the DSE. I run a fast-paced business that depends on energy. What's SDG&E doing to keep up? What's SDG&E's plan to make sure San Diego will have enough energy in the future? Hello, I'm Ed Giles, Chairman and CEO of SDG&E. To meet this region's growing need for energy, we're implementing our long-term reliability plan. This includes the new Palomar Energy Center located in Escondido. Now fully operational, this facility provides enough electricity to serve 360,000 homes. We're also enhancing the electric transmission system to improve the flow of electricity throughout our region. And we've proposed a major new transmission line to bring in electricity from clean, renewable sources. These are just some of the steps we're taking to meet future energy needs. Because at SDG&E, providing you with safe, reliable energy is our business and our commitment. For more information about our plans and services, visit sdge.com slash future. Okay, got your day planner out. Let's go ahead and block off some time on Saturday, July 29th to hang at San Alijo Hills. See, they're getting ready to kick off Festival Del Mar, so they're having a kickoff party. Festival Del Mar. They want you to come on up and party with them. This is all free. English Beat World Anthem will be playing in the San Alijo Hills Town Square. You can see what that's all about. I've been telling you about that town square where they get together and do cool things like have movies and concerts and stuff like that. Well, there's English Beat and World Anthem. Tons of food, stuff for the kids. The whole thing is free. Now, they're showing off some brand new models. Richmond American Homes. You can kick back on the double-decker buses. They'll take you on the best tour ever and enjoy different foods at different stops through all the neighborhoods. It's going to be great, and it's all to help promote Festival Del Mar. And then you can see how great it is to live in San Alejo Hills. Get a feel for it yourself. Here's the telephone number to call for more information. 888-SAN-ALIJO. Or go to SanAlijoHills.com for your directions. I know I know this.
this uh, English beat band. What do they sing that I know? Oh, what did they? They had some hits in the eighties. Oh yeah, I can't remember. You're talking about the Engli English beat, the name of the the That's band it. English oh, yeah. Beat. Oh yeah. Okay, look it up, Chainsaw. Now, round two of this morning's half baked crackpot news. Thank you, David. I didn't finish what the break? Huh? Oh, sorry. Stupid. Emily's all mad at oh, me. I didn't. Oh, great. <laughs> now she's going to be in her bad mood, and we, hey, we all have to suffer for your mistakes. Hey, hole. <laughs> you only played one. I played two. You played one and gave one. Well, that That's would be two. two. I said played. You only played one. Can you play the rest? I performed in another <laughs> one. <laughs> Brilliantly, I made so point out. <laughs> Taking it for granted, Dave, your extra work. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I want to play and have fun. Emily wants us to do commercials. Oh, my. <sighs> What a buzz kid. <laughs> I know. Kidding. You're not dying. It happens to all girls every 28 <laughs> days. Just think of butterflies. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. Hello? Dad, it's me, Mark. Listen, I'm stuck in Mexico. You need to come get me. Honey, it's Mark. He's down at the Rubio's again eating those carnitas tacos. He's being a wiseacre again. Dad, I'm not at Rubio's. Mark, I know Rubio's is just like Baja, like you're always saying. And I know about the $1.49 carnitas taco deal. You have fun, Mark. Wait, Dad! For a limited time, get the real taste of Baja real easy. Rubio's carnitas tacos are just $1.49. Driving way out of your way to find cheaper gas? Using the elevator at the gym? Have you done something lately that actually makes sense? Introducing Kearney Mesa Subaru, San Diego's exclusive Subaru destination. Great styles, fuel efficiency, all-wheel drive, sensible deals. Kearney Mesa Subaru, it just makes sense. Check us out at KearneyMesaSubaru.com. Conveniently located on Convoy Street between the 163 and 805. Kearney Mesa Subaru, it just makes sense. Breaking up a parts. Keep cool on the road this summer with great coupon specials from Craig and Auto Parts. Like peak ready-use antifreeze coolant, just $2.99 a gallon after rebate. A case of Chevron motor oil is only 59 cents a quart after rebate. You can save $8 when you buy a Fram oil and air filter together and save fuel with gunk fuel injector cleaner, carb cleaner, and engine degreaser. Your choice, just $1.99 each. See store for details. Want great coupon savings? We got it. Craig and Auto Parts. When you call 1-800-APPLIANCE for any repair, you'll always get a knowledgeable, uniformed repair technician to diagnose your problem, make the necessary repairs promptly, and you won't be overcharged. You'll also get a full year guarantee on all parts and labor. What you won't get is some guy in a broken down truck with the wrong tools trying to figure out the problem. When you don't have time for mistakes, the only number you'll ever need is 1-800-APPLIANCE. Appliance experts will rescue you. Call 1-800-APPLIANCE. Us. You know how to push the limit. You don't back away from a challenge. In fact, you go all in. Your ambition brings you triumph. You know great risks create even greater rewards. It's no surprise. You want a BMW. It's the ultimate driving machine. And when it comes to your dealer, you choose Brecht BMW and Escondido. We don't just sell BMWs. We race them. And when Brecht Motorsports competes, we win. But it's not about us. It's about your experience. Right now, we're featuring new 2006 X5s at the lowest prices we've seen all year. All new BMWs feature special lease and finance rates through BMW Financial Services. With dozens to choose from and prices that will amaze you, you'll finish first too. Finally, a dealership that performs just as well as the car you'll drive. Brecht BMW. We drive the experience. Where the 15 meets Highway 78 in the Escondido Auto Park. Call 1-888-OWN-A-BMW or visit BrechtBMW.com. A lot of great bad boss stories came in late after we had finished with uh, winner Jamie, runners-up Karen, and uh, who was the guy who had to clean up the exploded toilet? Oh, yeah. Jimmy! Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's the one who had a pot of boiling melted chocolate whipped at her head. Ugh. But a lot of great stories came in through the email. And uh, so we'll go through more of them tomorrow. Oh, good. Here on the DSC. It always makes me feel better. There's a death in one of them. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. See how good we have it. 
Are you ready with the the second half of this morning's news? Of course, too. Yes. No objections, if you don't mind, Emily. Okay. Is that okay? Guess not. Go ahead. Whatever. I guess. Thanks. Have her blessing. That's good. Schizo. Okay. <laughs> she might be even something at you. Be careful. Mm. Okay, uh, moving on with the news now. The president's most senior advisor talks immigration reform in Los Angeles. Eric Leonard now with that story. What am I playing? Eric I got, Leonard. I got Carl Rove. Carl Rove. That's it? Yep. Rove was interrupted twice by anti-war protesters, and he was mildly booed when he mentioned hiring mildly. more Border Patrol agents <laughs> yeah. and cracking down on businesses that hire illegal immigrants. Uh -huh. Rove says President Bush supports the so-called comprehensive immigration reform plan. He understands we need to secure our borders and enforce our laws. Boo! And he also you understands suck! that immigration is a positive force for good in America. <laughs> Rove That's says mild. immigration reform will take patience in what he calls a respectful debate. Eric Leonard, Los Angeles. Thank you, Eric. Meanwhile, an intense manhunt is underway in Phoenix. The cops there shooting for a or searching for a serial shooter and a serial rapist. Here's Ted Houston with that story. Oh, okay. Yes. Ted, Ted Houston. Mayor yeah. Phil Gordon says there will always be bad people out there. And right now in Phoenix, Thanks. we're chasing at least two of these monsters. But he says Phoenix is safe. The surest <laughs> way to create an unsafe community is for everyone to become prisoners of their own homes. He announced a one hundred thousand dollar reward. Thanks to the extreme generosity of several members of our community. Police have over a hundred officers and detectives working the cases full time round the clock. But so far, no good leads in either case. Ted Houston, Phoenix. Thank you, Ted. Well, there are more evacuations here in Southern California. Hang on a second, uh -huh. hang on a second here. What's Wayne has just showed oh, up. No. And the mic is on in the room where he's hanging out with We're not KGB Brummel. anymore. We're, we're K-Big. K-Big? Yeah. <laughs> He's feeding his dad some line of crap to avoid having to talk to him about his harebrained schemes. KGB. KBG. Oh, by the way, your last email, you said hacksaw in there. Did you know that? I know it. I saw that, Dave. You know what? I was in a real hurry. I had an appointment at 1 o'clock, and I was on that. Appointment to what? Drink coffee? <laughs> that guy doesn't do anything. I know. You. Hello. So I didn't get a chance to uh, do a spell check or... My uh, software doesn't have a uh, DJ check out of Dave. <laughs> you know, uh, just to check, see if I made the errors. I made numerous errors on a thing. Really? So, and I hate to do that. So, well, there's yes. nothing worse, Dave, than using a big word and you use it wrong. It's, it's a lesson. lesson. So, if, if you lesson. go to Wickenburg, Arizona, you get, you're going to do a you're going to do a radio show in Wickenburg. Well, we'll open the museum there. Oh, and, oh uh, my God! I thought Saint Basically, Hannah was going on. When we finish this money making project, what money making well, project? Well, uh, the dinner will be the on the fifteenth. Who's okay? Wait a minute. Well, now wait a minute. Let me finish. Let me answer my your Gosh, question. Darn it! Well, you said you're making you're having a dinner. Who's doing the dinner? We are you, Carrie? Oh, and I am. What, what am I going to do? <laughs> well, you're going to be one of the you're going to be one of the famous MCs. No, 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 no. Dad, get rubbed by Peter on your steak, Dad. Oh, God. Dad, I'm done rubbing my penis on your steak. It is a program. <laughs> what kind of dinner, though? Well, it'll be one of my ex-PTA presidents. It'll be tamales. Oh, gross. <laughs> tamales? So you're talking about school food. Oh, no, she's great. She's great. It'll give her, a, give her, make her some money for her. So you're going to have this dinner, and then you're going to have a Roy Cuff what? Well, the, then we'll um, introduce... Where's he opening the damn museum the now? Officer. Wickenburg. Officer. Where's that? Arizona. Oh, Lord. Who's, who's that? But good. Who, who well, I don't have be out of state. Of here, but, uh, the, the, it's all set, ready to go. I mean, we're, and you think... President, the former President Bush might be here. Well, the, the only reason I think he may not be here, I didn't get enough time, is... Most <laughs> or how about he might not want to be here? Why would he Why would he come to San Diego for a Roy Because Aka? he's a great Roy Aka fan. Oh, oh my oh. God. Oh, my dear God. That was one of the parts of the platform. Doing what? It's what got well, him elected. They were at the CMA, Country Music Association. Uh, Dad, how do you get an unpregnant? Of course, was living uh, about 1990. Well, son, you got to dress her up like a little altar oh. boy. <laughs> Anson uh, called me up and he says, turned on the channel again. He said, there's, there's President Bush and there's... Eight. Can you see these guys, Sanchez? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Oh, what is uh, what is Wayne wearing today? He has on a sporty red polo shirt. Nice. Tucked into his blue Adidas sweatpants. Oh, okay. no. Red polo tucked into sweatpants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's got the old one, two, school one, two, black one, two, Chuck Taylors. Yes. Black Chuck Taylors. He's got black wheels. Uh -huh. He's got the face of about 30 years old. Dave, hey, I've got a pie chart oh. here to describe how the uh, museum's going to look. One, two, one, two. There, that's better. Yeah, there we go. John Morgan. Thanks, John. Walked in the engineer. How long have you, you've been white, white here, John? 
<laughs> nice question. <laughs> what did he say? Is your bush white too? John? How long have you been gray? <laughs> How long have you had white hair, John? <laughs> yeah. That's a, this, a friend of mine. That a friend of mine had one. Yeah. <laughs> He thinks, oh, I've seen white hair was before. it former President Bush? Yes. Would be attending right. this tamale dinner uh -huh. on the 15th. Yeah. Yes. For a <laughs> Roy A. Cuff fundraiser, fundraiser so he can yes. build a museum in Wickenburg, Arizona. Yes. And it's all set. Yeah. Yes, and he really is this way. He doesn't even know that we're listening to their conversation right now. I'm not going to show you my hair. Take, take care, what are you talking about? I'm losing oh. my hair. Come on, let me peek at what you got under the hood there, <laughs> son. I'm losing my darn hair. It's time for you to become a man, son. I'll deflower you. Here you go. <laughs> oh, my God. Bend over that microphone. You look like the guy in uh, Little Rascals with the little hair plopped up. Well, that's my, that's my trademark. That's your trademark, which is gay. Yeah, John, we'll see you later. <laughs> what do you mean I'm losing my hair? You are. Yeah, right. He well, is. Are you balding? I'm not there, showing you my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I, hate to, I hate to break the news to you. If you didn't know it. Well, you're not the first to say that you think I'm. I'm not. I'm, <clears throat> I'm not. Well, it. it uh, what? Actually, it. Uh, it, it, yeah, that's right. He is going bald, which seals the total part of the total package. Yeah. But it's the, that's the Harrison side of the family. That's yeah, the yeah. The Harrison so anyway, side. Right. So anyway, you actually think you're going to go to Wickenburg, Arizona and go on the air? And, and, and what are you going to talk yeah, about on well, the air? we are going to go over exactly you, you know, it's the, not plan, that, the plan for the museum. You know, it's not that easy being on the air, you know. You, you act like you're going to do like a five-hour What, what you show. guys do, you guys made it. <laughs> you guys. They, 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 well, they've been doing it for 16 damn years. Darn years, sorry. Uh, I was going to talk to you about that, too. You know, the, your image. I don't think you should use damn and hell on that. <laughs> just a, Hello. Damn is not a swear word. It, you know, it's, you have a better vocabulary. Man. How about, it's for, hey, that, how damn about, is for emphasis. How about that movie called those di The Damn Yankees? How about douchebag, Dad? They use that word. <laughs> well, it's used in a different context. No, it's not. How so? It's the same way. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Son, I don't like it when you talk Ooh. dirty like that. Unless, of course, I'm doing you from behind. <laughs> 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 Oh, no. That will just go on for hours. Oh, I swear, that conversation will just oh. go on. Oh, hey, Dave. Yeah. I was walking uh, back to the studio here, and I saw Wayne, and I said, Oh, hey, Wayne, how you doing? And he goes, Well, uh, do you have two hours so I can tell you all about it, or do you just want me to tell you fine? And that's just an estimate. Right. That's it. an estimate. Two mm -hmm. hours. Very mm -hmm. concerning. Final do, gotta go. No Got doubt. a life to lead, Cha Cha. <laughs> Lord. All right, what else are we doing here? Uh... <laughs> Uh, there's a wildfire uh, near some famous sites in California. Stu Burger now with that story. Ooh. Yes, it's God, been a long time he, since we've had Stu Burger. makes me hungry. I know. I know what I'm having for lunch. Mm. Oh, Stu Burger. Stu, Stu Burger. <sighs> The fires destroyed or damaged at least 20 homes and other buildings, and fire officials tell the San Bernardino County Sun the fire may have burned up to 50 homes. Many of those buildings were in Pioneer Town, where Hollywood has filmed countless oh, westerns. No. Nearly a thousand people have evacuated. At least five firefighters and two other people have been injured. Leaders in Palm Springs declared a state of emergency. They're asking Governor Schwarzenegger for di disaster funding. Fed up with all the cigarette butts on the sandy shores, the San Diego City Council voted yesterday to snuff out smoking at all beaches. This ban will be imposed throughout our sprawling network of parks as well, including Balboa Park. In its ban, the council, al the council also cited health concerns about secondhand smoke, and that ban takes effect in 30 days. Shannon Doherty says it was shocking to get an email telling her that Aaron Spelling had died, even though she knew he wasn't feeling well. I think we all knew that he was sick, and I certainly stay in really close contact with Holly Marie Combs, who's one of my mm -hmm. closest friends, and so we both had discussed it, and, and I knew that it was far worse than anybody had really said it was. Shannon uh, says Aaron was very important to her. It's hard. You're talking about a man that I've known since I was... 18 years old that has played a significant significant role in my life that I owe a lot to. <laughs> yes. Shannon says there was an underlying connection even though she did make a really smooth exit from either well Beverly Hills 90210 or Charmed. No matter what people said about a relationship, I loved him dearly and he loved me dearly. And how do you know? You know, you always wish that things were different. <laughs> and Shannon says, gosh, I haven't spoken with Tori Spelling since the death of her dad, Aaron Spelling. I think Tori's in the midst of her own stuff right now. And it's best to, uh, I think it's best for a lot of people to give them their space. Oh, yes! 
space. That just means I don't want to talk to her. I'm not going to call. She won't take my phone calls. Shannon also says she's not looking at her appearance as a guest host on The View July 31st and <gasps> August 1st oh, as anything more than a chance to be a guest host. It's a one-time deal. They know that I could not move to New York. I'm not a New Yorker. I no. used to be. Yes. Huh? I'm California. No. Yes. I love the beach. Yes. I love my space. Mm -hmm. So I could never Second move time to New space. York. Shannon, tell us, are you heartbroken over the death of Aaron Spelling? Well, it's like I'm going to say when I'm guest hosting The View tomorrow night on syndicated national TV. <laughs> you don't Working understand. Working out a little plug during the obituary. <laughs> it's a eulogy plug. She's mm -hmm. very scared because she'll be working in front of a live audience at The View. I am so nervous to do mm -hmm. it. I get really I nervous in front of live audiences. So I think for me doing The View, it's instant judgment. You yes. look out there and you, you can know see what? on their no. faces whether uh -huh. they like you or not. Uh -huh. It's a very supportive crowd. Mm -hmm. It really is a supportive you group. You were supportive, weren't you? Very supportive to all the, all the, the members of The View. Yes. yes. It's a very, very amped up. Huh? What? <laughs> hey, look. Look. <laughs> they were free tickets. Uh -huh. We had a half a day before mm -hmm. our flight back and mm -hmm. we took advantage of it and, and watched my, my Barbara. Shannon says even though she's very nervous, <laughs> she's going to The View to learn. It's definitely the challenge because it's a new form for me. You know, I've yeah. never sort of hosted a talk show and I've never even Wonder thought about why. stuff like that. It's something interesting for me to try in case it's something I would want to do in the future. Mm -hmm. Is she going to be in the Meredith chair over on the left? I love my That's Meredith. That's what they've been doing. Yeah. I'm not yeah. gay, damn it. Hi, Meredith. Right. <laughs> I'm not gay, damn it. <laughs> well, one of the original members of Pink Floyd has died. We told you yesterday, Sid Barrett was 60 years old. He was with the band at its inception in 1965, but forced out three years later after increasingly erratic drug-related behavior. He was taking a lot of the vitamins L, S, and D. Mm. ABC's David Blaustein now reporting. Sid Barrett was a member of Pink Floyd for yeah. only three years. Uh, but never heard of all him the before. time he needed to influence rock history. Oh, okay. Rolling Stone contributing editor Anthony DeCurtis. He had put the band on the map initially. By creating the band's early psychedelic sound with songs like Arnold Lane and C. Emily Clay. Never heard of them. Of you know, songs you, that's your songs you wouldn't listen to ever. ever. A figure that haunted Pink Floyd. In fact, Pink Floyd's classic song, Shine On You Crazy Diamond, is about Barrett. Never heard of it. No. It's on the album <laughs> Wish You Were Here, which is dedicated to the songwriter and guitarist. <laughs> Barrett, who suffered from diabetes, had been living as a recluse since 1972. David Blaustein, ABC News. This is a true statement. Oh, yeah. The Japanese They're still talking. Oh, here and we they go. were yelling, Roy. No, no, let's, don't, don't no. upstage me here. <laughs> 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 Let me have you the microphone. Oh. You, you, they would come through with their big long bayonets there, right. and they would say, "To hell with." We just Ray cursed. Roof, to hell oh with, no! With Roosevelt and to hell with Roy Acuff. They did not. <laughs> Wayne is claiming that the Roy. Japanese soldiers in World War II would get under GI Joe's skin mm -hmm. by insulting <laughs> Roy Acuff. <laughs> It's almost That's like it. calling your mother a whore, right. a terrorist whore. We're going to headbutt well, you with an A-bomb. We're ready to move, and if I get any cooperation from the uh, radio station here, so basically just to give dates and times and to get people excited about right. it. That's uh, impossible. Sure well, yes. we'll dates and times, $100, yes. I'm excited, impossible. $100 for what? one ticket. Tamales? Or, well, uh, what are they going to get for $100? Well, they, they get the program. They get the seat <laughs> program. Uh? To, He's not going to show up, Bush. You, want to bet? you think the former President Bush, yes, what's I his first bet. name? George. George <laughs> what's his Herbert. first name? <laughs> it's what's different that? from the, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Well, he's, he's president right now, George Bush. Yeah. Oh, that's Christ. The there's, there's a George. Uh, I didn't know that. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, God. Know everything. That's, a, that's the problem so, here. The... Uh, and Senator Byrd has been, uh, he's 86. Okay, why why are you asking that guy to be here? I'm, well, David, I'm looking for famous supporters of Roy. They'll be our honor. Are you going to ask anybody on the show? DSC, are you going to ask any, are you going to ask Dave? Yeah, I, I put it oh. in my letter. I'll bet Thanks. you Dave would do it if you asked. I'll it's bet in you, the I'll letter. Bet you Dave would, you know. It's in the no, letter, but the hacksaw is also in the letter, so I think Lee will be going. Uh, oh, you don't? But I, want him, I want him to get He's on the board. The uh, radio award. Well, who's going to be master of ceremonies? You're not still going after Billy Ray Smith, are you? No, you and Carrie. I'm not going to be master of ceremonies. I'll be mistress of ceremonies. Myself. 
Just play it by ear here, Dave. Dave. Yeah. I'll do most of the. Dave, it's going to oh, be I great. I know you will. Right. You know, uh, George Clooney's going to be there. <laughs> There's my son over there who's almost bald. We'll be. We'll be <laughs> show us your hair, Dave. We'll be introducing. <laughs> Who? The prominent guest. Who's the prominent guest? Well, there'll be a, a number of educators because. We're <laughs> oh, really my God. God. Former in, well, music teacher at junior high. <laughs> It Dad, is not, uh, it, it, I hate to tell you this, but a lot of people don't find historic stuff boring. But I, you know what, Dave? It doesn't matter. We won't depend on people going through there. We're looking at grants. At, at, well, you've tried to grants. explain us your grants, and you haven't done a very good well, job, remember? No, no, I haven't at all. As a matter of fact, I've, I've stumbled through this. This is uh, Wayne and Bromel having a discussion mm -hmm. about, for the billionth time, his Roy Phantom Acuff. Roy A. Cuff Museum, <laughs> which now he's inviting George Bush no, to. Not. We're not doing He'll be Broadway there. What a bet. For a tamale dinner for right. 100 bucks a plate. Right. Yeah, well, that may, we may throw that aside, but the, the Bromo. Uh, if I can get one of the uh, the car dealers to tow that thing down here and fix it, oh. who's going to want a towed up clunker with 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 Bromo written on it? Well, plenty of people. Oh, only one Name. guy bought one ticket. Name well, one. Because we'll be now. Here's the scenario. Dave. He only bought one ticket. Look, Dave. 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 <laughs> Dave. The scenario is that we that we say, all right. fall asleep. The, the the Bromo mobile is going to be exhibited at. Let's see, Mazda, some Mazda place or something like that. And then there, Clark and I are there with our group. Oh, no. You think Mazda's going to want to? You think Mazda's going to want to put that Bromobile out on display? Well, so sure. they'll go out of business. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they want to do that? No, they're going to bring them. They're going to. They'll. They'll. Uh, they'll. It'll bring people in. Dave. And, and it'll be a national city day where where my where oh, I. Oh yeah, got, the mecca of Roy yeah, Cup. Yeah, there's a, it's <laughs> well not. Maybe not that so much, but uh, I mean, I know people there. And Dave, I know people. I'm a mover and a shaker, Dave. Yeah, the only people it's going to bring in are the trash abatement squad. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> The jet doesn't even have the will to crash on I don't that one. Blame it. Yes. Oh my God. It just broke up on re entry. All right. What Alrighty. else are we talking about? Um. Let's see. Do you have uh, Do you have Rockstar up there? Uh, d d I've got Zyra yeah. Alvarez. Zyra Alvarez. Well, this is on the show Rockstar Supernova. She dissed the judges last night uh, on that show. The Texan singer snapped back when Dave Navarro, Tommy Lee, and company picked at her performance of the song You Really Got Me Going. I don't think you have a clue of what we're looking for in a singer. You haven't told me. Do you even own any record that any of us have ever been on? I've heard of your music. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Baby, I was wearing diapers when that was out. Oh! Whoa! Snap! Mm. And Dan Rather says... So was I. I was wearing diapers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing them right now. And Dan Rather is wearing diapers Wanna right see now. I'll show them to you. He hey, promises hey. to bring viewers news like you've never seen it before when he returns to TV in October on HDNet. That's high definition net. Uh -oh. Dan Rather reports will feature field reports, interviews, and investigations all produced and no. uh, controlled by the legendary newsman. No one's ever seen that before. <laughs> no. You bet your life I got a lot of baggage. Mm -hmm. And make no mistake, I'm proud of it. Yes, I'm biased. I have a very strong bias toward independent journalism. Yeah. So Dan Look at him. Oh, yeah. He looks yeah. almost too tired to stand up. <laughs> uh, but you're in control, right? I have complete, total, absolute, Thank creative, God. and editorial control yeah, on this program. Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes welcomed their daughter, Suri, almost three months ago, but the notoriously public pair has yet to show their baby to the world. You know, like anybody's, like anybody's flipping through the TV guide going, oh, that Dan Rather program? Mm -hmm. He's in complete control of it. We better watch that. We better that. tune in. Like, that's interesting to anybody. I know. Except Only to Dan. him. It's almost like he's trying to start his own little Roy A. Cuff museum <laughs> somewhere. Wow. You know, it's okay. very. You know what? What's the, um, I don't know how many tickets you. How many tickets are? Do you think that you have to sell to, to actually come out ahead in this thing? I mean, well, how many people you think you're going to get to this What's thing? What's your business plan? Well, we're, we're if you read my email, I read your email, but how many people do you think actually are going to go to this thing? Well, what what did I say we're targeting? Like seven hundred? Uh, seven hundred. I said that will be oh. our goal. We'll be good. Oh we call seven hundred seats. Wow. 700 people. Oh, my God. i got to get me a tamale and hear about Roy Acuff. Delusions of Take my money. <laughs> oh, my God. People uh, be camping out the night before. Uh -huh. Just like Star Wars That'll opening happen. night. Mm -hmm. God. 
Anyway, back to Tom and Katie. The really important news: uh, there are a lot of a lot of conspiracy theories running around. Here's uh, Us Weekly's West Coast executive editor Ken Baker with one of those theories. The conspiracy theories are probably tantamount to the "Who Shot JFK" conspiracy. Shut theory. up! Hey, that's Everyone fact. is yes. alleging everything yes. from the baby doesn't exist. To the baby doesn't look like Tom. Mm-hmm. To the baby, there's something wrong with what the would baby. You know about baby. Dress up like a female. I'm a man. <laughs> More from Ken Baker on the conspiracy theories surrounding Tom and Katie's baby. Obviously, celebrities. I like, like butterflies. Bye, 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 bye. I like butterflies. butterflies. Why isn't my name public. Kenneth? However, <laughs> Tom Cruise is known for parading his personal life. <laughs> <laughs> he is not bashful about it, so that has caused a lot of questions. Nightmares and Dreamscapes is a TNT-based series uh, on stories by Stephen King. It starts tonight with back-to-back episodes. William Hurt kicks off the season with Battleground about a hitman terrorized by his own deeds. William H. Macy stars as a detective in an episode called Umner's Last Case. Here's Macy talking about uh, uh, King and saying he's the master of the switch. King does a great job because that switch is uh, at once... um believable and yet he doesn't spend a lot of time making you believe it he just sort of does it and it's a, a collision of 2005 meets 1938 Anne Hathaway says you know it does kind of bother me when people come up and say it's so refreshing to see someone regular in Hollywood and says I'm like well what does that mean I don't want to be the regular girl because that's code word for fat by the Hollywood system <laughs> She says in Hollywood, you have to be careful. If you go above a size six, you are considered the fat slob. I'm considered to be, I hope, an actress, and you can get away with a couple of extra pounds if you're trading on your talent oh, instead of your sex appeal. How did she get so boring so quick? Taking herself seriously. Emily yeah. Blunt is in the movie. She says she learned an important lesson in filming The Devil Wears Prada. Piss off! Oh, yes, she's Emily. So blunt. Mm. <laughs> Never eat. A big lunch oh. on a film when you're having to be cinched in by a belt. And Emily says she's become more fashion conscious while, uh, since making the film, but she's happy to be able to be in her jeans again. It's a relief to dress casually. Yeah, because I was cinched in and stretched out within an inch of my life. Yeah, and Emily says she enjoyed wearing the high fashion clothes and the Devil Wears Prada, but uh, doesn't like it when everybody jumps on a fad. Everybody kind of follows the newest fad because it seems yes. to be safer in that way if there's a kind of conception that this dress, this new Burberry dress, whatever, looks Mama. great. Even if you hate it, people tend to kind of follow it. And, and I don't like that because it seems to be then that the clothes are wearing the person rather than hate the other it. way around. And it. Emily says she actually pushed to use her English accent for her character in The Devil Wears Prada. I know she was supposed to be cast American, but I thought it would be funnier. I just thought it would be funnier. There's something incredibly... Um, don't think, honey. Quit we got it. writers for that, okay? <laughs> Just stand in front it. of the camera and read the lines. God. Do we have a, a lot more? Because I'm getting no, way no, late no. on No, Finally this morning, Dale Hampton has won the national cluck off again. The Arkansas man has been the best clucker for the past eight years. They must not know Bromo. Uh, the clucking no competition doubt. is a highlight of Wayne Chicken Days in Wayne, Nebraska. Wayne. Sounding like a bird comes Hello. naturally to Hampton. He says when he was a kid, he wanted to do the voices on the Looney Tunes cartoons. All right. Thank you, Shelly Dunn. Oh, yeah. Chainsaw Sports. We are talking about the All Star Game. Summer of '95. And on. And on. Jokes gone wild. Oh no. Coming up here, the DSE. 1015 KGV is your concert connection. The voice you know. The music you crave. Here comes David Lee Roth. Friday night, July 21st. Paula Casino Spa Resort, located in northern San Diego County, is proud to present David Lee Roth live. David Lee Roth sets the stage on fire. Friday night, July 21st, at Paula Casino Spa Resort. Look out! Here he comes! In the entire world, there's only one day. Reserve seats available now through the Paula Privileges Center or by calling Ticketmaster at 619-220-TIXS. Don't miss the live performance that has everybody jumping. Here comes David Lee Roth. Take the I-15 or I-5 to Highway 76 and go east. Okay. What's up, caller temp? Come on, caller 10. Caller 10. You are caller 10. 
Awesome. That means you win. First winner today on a summer of 9 to 5. And you're on a bonus day. So That's extra, awesome. extra good for you. What's your name? Uh, name's Matt. Okay, Matt. First off, I'm going to hook you up with a four-pack of tickets to the zoo. You have a family who wants to go to the zoo? Very cool. Yep. Got a seven-year-old boy who would love it. Excellent. And don't make any plans for tomorrow night. Eddie Money at Humphreys Concert Spot the Bay. That's your bonus. We're going to throw those in for you. Thanks very much, Dave. Matt, thank you for listening to the uh, DSC today. You bet. Where are you today? Uh, on my way to work, actually. Well, you know, we say it's another incredible work for uh-huh. listening while you drive to your job. Oh. Hey, stand by, Matt. There's also a chance for you to win a Jeep Liberty. Thanks to our pals at Rancho, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge. And 101.5 KGB. Chainsaw Sports in 60 seconds. Here on the KGB. Mossy Toyota is run by Team Jason. That is the place for your next truck or SUV in San Diego. Now, Jason Mossy is competing with his annoying little brother down there on Mission Bay Drive to see who can sell the most cars and trucks. Now, Mossy has one of the largest inventories in all of Southern California. Check out the Forerunners, the FJ Cruiser. That's the new addition to the Toyota lineup. Highlanders, Land Cruisers, Sequoias, Tacomas, Tundras, you name it, any one of these is perfect for putting your family in and taking them wherever you want to be this summer. You got a boat? Lash that to the back of one of these and head to your launch spot. They are perfect for that. Mossy Toyota, where you can check out all the outstanding deals, especially on their trucks and SUVs. They've got a lot. They want to show them to you. Huh? Brothers are competing, so go get your savings on now at Mossy Toyota Mission Bay Drive, Pacific Beach. Painful to watch. Yes. Yet cover it for you now, we must. Here's Chainsaw with the post All Star Game wrap up. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, David. And hello again, everybody. In the sports world. In the Major League All Star Game last night in Pittsburgh, the National League had a two to one lead with the Padres' Trevor Hoffman in for the save in the ninth inning. He had two outs, he had two runners on, an 0 2 count. Two strikes on Texas Rangers shortstop Michael Young. World Series home field advantage on the line. Here's the windup. The pitch swung on and lined into right center, a base hit. Uh-oh. And this ball will get to the wall. Uh-oh. And two runs will score. No. Young around second, heading for third. The relay to third, not in time. A two-run triple by Michael Young with the American League down to its final strike. Huh. And they have taken a 3-2 to two lead here in the top of the ninth. And so it was the Yankees' Mariano Rivera who saved it for the American League, which has secured home home field advantage in the World Series with last night's victory. That's what what was at stake. The first place Padres resume action Friday night at Petco Park against the Atlanta Braves. French soccer superstar Zidane Zidane was reportedly (laughs) provoked to headbutt an Italian player during the World Cup final because the guy called him a son of a terrorist or. Zidane was offended by that statement because he says his mother is not a terrorist. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the national bath. I've been working out, getting in shape. You getting in shape, sir? What kind of workout do you do? I do the Fonda workout. Peter Fonda workout. <laughs> That's where I wake up in the morning, take a head of acid, smoke a joint, go over to my sister's house, ask her for money. <laughs> I lost 40 pounds, so I really got to be... No, hold on. I gained it all back. I... <laughs> You didn't let me finish. I I went on that Irish liquid diet, Slim Fast and Bailey's Irish Cream. (laughs) Three shakes a day, you're ready for the Betty Ford Center and a liver transplant. (laughs) My mother actually told me, don't be talking about liver transplants on stage. What if Larry Hagman was in the audience? (laughs) You were doing a big routine on liver. That's not right. (laughs) Maybe Larry Hagman's not in the audience. Maybe he's not. But maybe somebody is sitting in the audience waiting for a liver. Did you ever think of that? 
They came to see some comedy, and there they are sitting in the room waiting for a liver transplant. <laughs> You're doing a whole liver routine. God! <laughs> there they are sitting in the showroom with their beeper on. <laughs> because that would ruin your gig. <laughs> they have it on vibration mode. That thing goes off and they know their liver is in. <laughs> and they got to get up from the room and walk out the door with their igloo container. <laughs> <laughs> and what would you do, Mr. Delio? <laughs> Give him a big onion on the way out? <laughs> liver and onions, that's not even funny! <laughs> <laughs> Skip Auto Association. Police found marijuana in Carmelo oh, Anthony's car oh, no. during a traffic stop in Colorado at the Denver Nugget Star. Carmelo Anthony was not in the vehicle at the time. Spokesman for Anthony says the weed belonged to a friend. Ah. Just like a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. the weed found in Carmelo Anthony's bag at an airport was also attributed to a friend. He's just taking it out for a ride. I wonder right. if that same friend... <laughs> will receive any of the $80 million contract Carmelo is expected to sign today. A new five-year extension that would be $16 million a year or 8,000 kilos of yeah. mid-grain ganja. <laughs> Discount if you buy in bulk. So yeah. congratulations to Carmelo. Very mellow. Indeed. Indeed. David. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, other sports? Covered it all. I did cover it all. There are no other sports. Oh, Unfortunately, none. Tomorrow should be interesting. 10.05, 15 seconds. <laughs> this, that's when I really make it up. 101.5. KGB Sports Network. Oh, my. Thank you, Chainsaw. It's brought to you by Vista Plumbing and Vista Fixtures. Repairs and new construction. Now they sell it all. From plumbing fixtures, toilets and tubs, to sinks, faucets, and garbage disposals. Call for a quote. 760-758-2345. The bit you can't unhear. Joke's gone wild. Brand new installment for you. iPods ready. Bringing it to you next. Wait. KGB and Q103. Aflac for small business. Yeah, you cover small business? Yes, we do. Great, because I'm a flea. Okay. Well, it is a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. <laughs> Look, I got a family business. So, oh, here comes Pa. Oh, your dad? No, a well, Pa! <laughs> well, with Aflac for small business, you get a lot of the benefits of a big business at no direct cost to you. Oh, 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 oh like a flea market? Oh, oh. Well, sort of. Visit AfflacSB.com or call 1-800-99-AFLAC. American Family Life Assurance Company of Columbus. Aflac. 85 KGB. They're wild. They're crazy. Hi, I'm Tiffany. You want to see my tan line or my punchline? College co-ed jokes. The wildest party jokes you've ever seen. This is DSE's Jokes Gone Wild. Brought to you by Honda and Mazda of Escondido. God bless Honda and Mazda of Escondido. It's, gosh, it's a win-win situation. Do you go Honda? Do you go Mazda? Either way, go Honda Mazda of Escondido. Joke's gone wild. As you know, we live in a very fussy time. And your government does not think you can take a good old-fashioned dirty joke. And so we got to censor the heck out of them. Yeah, I can't even say censor. Mm -hmm. oh, no, I got to fix oh, that. Oh, 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 Dave. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's just more work for me, David. Um, Are we ready to go? Sure. It's going to be bleeped. Yes. It's going to be... What, Emily? What? <laughs> what do you need to do? Put it on. Oh, hold on. Uh, <sighs> you got to yell at yourself now? Yeah, yeah, Tell yeah. yourself to piss off. Piss off! All right. <laughs> Doesn't seem to have the same verve when she's yelling yeah, at herself. I, know. Yeah, she's, I think she's kind of gentle. On her. Come on, make it yeah. count. Piss off! Oh, you're still kind Too of... Too happy. <laughs> Razzleberry, cuddly, dudley. All right. Is, is, the, uh, is the reel supposed to be in audition, too? Yeah. All right. Tell me when we can start. I'm sorry. It's all right. Are we ready to go? Tell a butterfly to piss off. I can't. Do it. Can't. Do it. <laughs> oh, no. uh, we're going to have to censor this like crazy. But here's the thing. We're going to load this on the Internet. and You can download it to your iPod cool. or however it works. I don't really know. 
Uh, can you do you have to have an iPod to uh, enjoy the joke on wild? You do not. You can download it to your regular old computer. Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. All right. Excellent. Put it on your iPod if you want to do that. Uh, you want to play it on your computer? That's cool too. You will, however, hear it completely uncensored, and you won't be able to unhear it. Ugh. Are you ready? Yeah. What's the matter? Well, it always stays with me. It's like a scar, you know. It's, it's like a bad meal. Yes. It is. Clams under the heat lamp. Oh. I'll grow up. <laughs> yeah, it's me. You're right. Joke's going wild. Here we go. Please tell me about the joke. Gotta hear the joke of the day. Want to know the joke right now. This is the story of Patrick and Gerald. Patrick. Patrick Fitzgerald and Gerald Fitzpatrick. Yes, they were having a lover's spat one morning in their tastefully decorated flat in Hillcrest. Gerald, I'm sorry if you think I'm being a bitch, but uh, don't you think it's time you got off your tight little ass and got yourself a job? <laughs> I know I should, Patrick, but ever, ever since I got fired from the sperm bank last year, nothing interests me. Well, serves you right for a <laughs> I'm so sure. The two looked through the classifieds of the reader, searching for something that matched Gerald's skills. Oh, looky! Thief Candy Factory needs experienced fudge packer. <gasps> oh, it's you! I like this one. Look, Patrick, it's a construction job in Pennsylvania. Oh, it would be so cute. <laughs> you would be so cute in one of the little hard hats. Oh, what does it say? Luckily, her small Pennsylvania town is building major freeway. Need workers. <gasps> Call 555 oh. and say you want to help pave the Hershey Highway. Oh, yes. oh. Well, <laughs> the fellas looked and looked while they shared a cup of General Foods internationally flavored coffees. Uh. And then, there it was. It leapt from the pages and shouted their names. Uh. This is it, Patrick. Uh. It's just what I've always wanted. Uh. A full naval commission. <gasps> oh, I get to command a whole fleet of boats. Oh, and all those sailors. <gasps> Oh, how I envy you. Oh, you are so funny. It's you, Gerald. Yes. I found my life's calling. Patrick, I'm going to be a rear admiral. <laughs> <laughs> and so they began preparing for Gerald's big day. Gerald, you go shower up, poof up your hair, and put on that nice little puce suit I like so much, and <laughs> I'll get things ready for your interview. So Gerald went off and primped and primed and soon was ready for the big job interview. But as he was getting ready to leave, he couldn't find Patrick. At first, he thought it was one of those silly little games that Patrick liked to play, you know, where he'd hide somewhere in the flat and then spring out and surprise Gerald by spraying him full of whipped cream and then lick it off him. Yeah. And he heard, an, he heard a, a queer noise uh, coming from the kitchen. Uh, 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 the noise, the noise uh, grew louder. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, Oh, yes, the noise went on for quite some time oh, before me. Gerald. Oh, <laughs> nobody. Oh, does me like me. Oh, yes. He well. followed the sound of the kitchen, oh. and when he swung open the doors, he was shocked oh. to see his beloved Patrick oh. Oh. vigorously oh. with a glad Ziploc baggie. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Yellow and blue make green. Oh. Gerald was stunned, <gasps> confused, and visibly aroused. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Patrick, what are you doing? Patrick looked up from his little project and said, Well, what does it look like I'm doing, silly? I'm... <laughs> Do you get that, Emily? Do you get why that's funny? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> Now, if you want to hear that completely unedited, go to 101kgb.com. If Emily doesn't forget to load it. <laughs> but remember, you can't unhear it. Enjoy that one, Chainsaw? Very much. Nicely done playing Patrick. Gerald was brilliant. Thank you. You sound like a couple. <laughs> <laughs> It's your brand new installment of Jokes Gone Wild here on the KGB and Q103.
Today's show has been brought to you by Trophies, Chapman University, Pierce Biotechnology, Crossroads of the West, Bank of America, Disneyland, and Walgreens. All right. All right, Cindy Pace is going to come waddling in here in her leaky mm. Hanes underwear. Mm-mm-mm. You're going to rip one before you leave? <laughs> Make her feel at home. Yeah. <laughs> reminder, reminder of the good old times. Uh-huh. <laughs> what did I say was my new band today? Uh, oh, uh, my mother's... Uh, hammy, uh, hammy tongue. tongue. Hammy, hammy tongue. tongue, yeah. Big hammy tongue. Make it big hammy tongue. <laughs> From that, sir, yes. That's what Cindy said her old boss used to do. Yeah. Come into the studio. Yeah. Cough in his pants and then try and stick his, quote, big hammy tongue in my mouth. Yeah. That chick lives the life, man. <laughs> Rock star. <laughs> hammy tongue. I love that. All right, she's going to uh, continue with the summer of 9 to 5. Your Eddie Money tickets, your Zoot tickets. Ditch will do that this afternoon. And then the fun all ends at 7 o'clock. And we're back. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 5 on KGB San Diego and KTMQ Temecula. Love your show.